agenda. Again, we are in our beautiful new meeting room in our beautiful new building. So we welcome the public to come by and visit us and fill out cards for our 100-year time capsule. There's little cards by the front door. We have another week we're going to be doing that, and then we're going to plan to bury the time capsule. So today, we are very, very happy and privileged to have before us the um, Glenwood Springs, Glenwood Springs, Garfield County. We came from Glenwood Springs to get here. Garfield County Commissioners. We have Tom Jankowski and John Martin. So welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. We are so Thank happy you. to see you. Mm -hmm. We appreciate this. So I think today, John, can I start off, John Peacock? I'm going to start off, um, I know we have Carol who's going to do a presentation, but I want to start off with thanking Garfield County for um, their assistance in helping us with um, continuance of governance during the late Christine fire. If our power had gone out, if the, if the lines had gone down, we were offered a space in your facilities to continue our government, and we really appreciate your reaching out to us. We also really want to thank you for um, all of the joint efforts we've been having, um, we have and we continue to have with Garfield County, with our um, public health and our human health, um, human ser services, and we really, uh, really appreciate that. So um, before we start off, we have a little gift for Garfield County, and we are sure you're going to find it very amusing. So, Pat, you Pat, look nervous, John. No, is, is it a parking pass? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, the oh, city oh. has can't those. even get those. Yeah, can't get that one either. Okay. We're still under all all right, all right. trying to wrangle those ourselves. We happen to have found this during our move. Um, apparently, the old train, yeah. Since uh, for wow. quite some time, I think since 1994. Yeah. So we want to we want to give it back to you. Well, thank you. That, that was because uh, well, no, I can't say. <laughs> I can't We're say. We're repatriating it. Yes. All right, that's the old railroad bridge down at Carbondale, right there. Yeah. Yep. It's and a tank so bridge. It's down, it's down a little bit further. So that's the Rio Grande bridge there. Right now, yep. yeah, that's the trail that goes there, and it also goes to the old. Uh, so uh, somehow we, it, it, it was here in our old building, we believe, right, John? Somewhere? 493,000 shares. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, we I had two, so we decided to give you back yours. That was an energy grant. Uh, uh, it came from the Department of, of Local Affairs when, when the yeah. energy grants were out and about. John, you got some of those down in Mesa County, too. Yeah, we got a few of those. Yeah, you did. So we, we decided that it was time it went to its rightful home down in Garfield County. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. We'll, we'll put it on our wall of fame. Okay. Uh, and we'll put down there, yeah. presented by <laughs> Pekin County Commissioners. So in 2018. 25 years late. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Remember, remember one. 193,000 yeah. shares. <laughs> <laughs> remember that. Yes. Okay, so we have a presentation, I believe, on our joint <laughs> broadband <laughs> projects. And um, we're excited about our recent Department of Local Affairs grant that we got. We were so excited to hear that we got the full amount of the award. And Greg Winkler happened to be here for the opening of our new building when um, he handed us the letter, so it was very exciting. So I'm going to turn it over to Kara, Kara Silbernagel, who is, I said it right, didn't I? Yeah. And she's going to give us a brief presentation on broadband. Uh, all right. Thank you for having me. on. Thanks for having me. Um, I just want to congratulate you guys on this collaboration. It is a pretty big collaboration. Uh, to work on broadband throughout the area. And so this is just a quick high-level summary of what the project is. I really want to, it's just for you guys to be able to have a conversation, but just very quickly. Um, so the joint uh, award, we were awarded 1,055, 1 million, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah, there you go, exactly. <laughs> 1,055,898 for a basically fixed wireless broadband middle mile project. Uh, Garfield County is going to be the fiscal agent, so thank you guys. It's very fantastic. Um, so in su at a very high level, what this is going to do is it's going to enable Pitkin County. We've done kind of the first phase of our project, so it's going to allow us to expand that to add three secondary sites and three tertiary towers in Pitkin County. So that's really helping us get to those rural drainage areas, the hardest to reach. And it's going to allow Garfield County to establish five primary towers, um, establish one 
microwave figure eight loop, as well as the savings that we found through this collaboration will allow Garfield County and the entire region to identify additional towers um, as best to be placed based on efficiency and the best geographical territory. So when this first started, we had independently asked uh, this DOLA for a total of a, just over a million dollars. We didn't increase or reduce the ask, but just by collaborating, we found $315,000 in savings and doing a very rough preliminary um, redesign and coverage analysis. That's allowing us individually, we were reaching 60% of the region. Collaboratively, we're reaching 78% of the region. Um, taking that to the rural areas individually, it was 50% of the region. We've increased that to 73%. That's, that's a great success. So that really highlights the, this collaboration. Um, just for perspective, here's kind of the regional map. Pitkin County, just because of the watershed, we've included parts of Gunnison County, <coughs> parts of Eagle County, and then including all of Garfield County. So this is a four county project right now, um, which is great. So not to get too technical, <laughs> do I have an arrow? No, I don't have an arrow. Um, so this was individually when we had our projects um, separate grants. We were both looking at rebuilding our towers on Sunlight Mountain. We were both looking at buying backhaul independently, yet from the same provider. <laughs> and we were both looking at getting to the city of Glenwood Springs as a meet me center independently. Um, and had kind of, we had a loop in Pitkin County. You guys had a little bit of a loop but we had a single point really went back to Sunlight and Glenwood Springs in our loop. Um, and so when we created a co collaboration, we are now building one site at Sunlight. We can leverage those dollars and build another site at Lookout Mountain, have one expense for City of Glenwood Springs, one expense for Backhaul, and now I've created a truly figure eight dog leg figure <laughs> um, to really create redundancy in the microwave loops. So from any point in this valley and others, we just experienced it with fire. It can put things out on the ground or aerial, and this allows us multiple ways to be able to still communicate, which is fantastic. Um, and so what's next? Uh, we anticipate the contract with the state to be completed in September, October. At that point, we can actually start spending funds. Uh, so I think we've very roughly discussed doing more network design and planning in the winter, really looking at that cost model, where are those true savings we can find, and what are the um, revenues of how those revenues get shared across the different uh, jurisdictions and the assets. Um, and then from the IGA that both Pitkin and Garfield County signed was a commitment to look into a multi-jurisdictional structure. Really that, the point of that would be to reduce those ongoing costs, share in that revenue, and really create a long-term sustainability for the project with the least amount of, you know, uh, input from our side and having a third entity. So I just, again, want to hand it back to you guys and say this collaboration is Fantastic, it couldn't have happened at a better time. Um, and well done. <laughs> Thanks, Kara. Yeah. Thank you. Oh yeah, Tom, go ahead, please. Karen, can you, can you review the, uh, the percentage of the, the region that, that we'll, be, we'll be able to uh, give broadband to? Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah. But yeah, what were those numbers, so? So we're, this was just based on preliminary, um, just guessed at a couple towers, but really because we've gone and made that figure eight and have savings that we could add additional towers, um, unincorporated is really pulling out those municipalities. I think that's 73%. So we're going to get to 73% of the homes in unincorporated Garfield. Mm -hmm. And Pit that's Pitkin the entire region. And Eagle and maybe That's this whole region. That's uh, that red outline. As well. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think, I, I mean, this is fabulous. So, it's yeah. a lot of both. Really yeah. Um, so, there may be areas up 
certain draws or things like that that you will yeah. need those additional kind of tertiary towers but they now have something clear to connect to a lot closer to home and we're, we're facing the same thing with getting the smaller towers up um, rural draws and roads yeah, and, and, it's, and it's very preliminary but I would like to uh, touch on what Karen said about you know uh, uh, either a collaborative authority or uh, as opposed to you know Garfield County, Pickens County, Eagle County, all trying to share the or, or three different the contracts. revenues. Is there is there some way we can have an authority <coughs> that will oversee all of this, and, and, and maybe the revenues you would generate can go back into that to help uh, fund that and, and help fund um, you know the infrastructure into the future, and, and right. maybe more towers, and we can upgrades as needed. Upgrades and all that, yeah. So I, I I'm more than in favor of that would like to see that uh, something like that happen I, we, we did a, an authority with Garfield Clean Energy amongst the municipalities and the county and CMC and RAFTA and unfortunately that authority doesn't have any income <laughs> other than uh, what, what is funded by the, <coughs> out of the general fund from all those entities but I just think this is you know we can it's a great start like to see collaboration amongst all of us for that. So. I think it's great. Karen's yeah. doing a great job. And I wonder, just tagging on to that, um, we have, I don't know who Garfield County uses for your um, uh, your contractor who goes out and, and sends out RFPs for possible vendors. Mammoth, we, so we, happily, we mammoth. Um, both, both Picking County and Garfield County went through RFP processes independently, but we selected the same vendor uh, through that process. So we're both working with Mammoth uh, Networks. Um, right now, um, we're, we're at just slightly different stages, but I think we're set up in a similar fashion where we're first doing um, at least what we we're calling the blueprint I don't know if you're calling it a blueprint also but really lining out the the business model um, as far as you know how we expect revenue shares and such to work and then there will be um, a separate set of agreements following up based on that blueprint for um, really network operation and then they will seek the internet service providers who provide the final uh, service to the home right so given that we already have some collaboration <coughs> perhaps we'll get some uh, very competitive bids uh, from those uh, network providers uh, given the territory that they will be able right. to uh, cover and, and that was one of the reasons for collaboration was there's a pretty significant overlap area uh, between uh, customers say in garfield county that would have been under pickens umbrella if you will and then uh, customers in the mid valley area that would have been under Garfield County's umbrella so there's no reason to have two competing systems trying to compete for those same customers and ruining each other's business model mm -hmm. yeah. um, so uh, <coughs> you know another beauty of having that uh, shared governance type of a model would be on the revenue sharing side we don't want to be fighting over whose customer is in which district and counting that every month and uh, trying to separate the revenue. There might be one internet service provider providing to residents in both counties and, um, and as the network owner, you know, through our contract with the network operator, we should be able to share in those revenues. That's how the contract will be structured. And that those revenues then should fund the ongoing maintenance and operation of the system. Mm -hmm. That was good, yeah. That's great. Very good. Any other questions or comments? Or I mean, yeah, everybody understands all this technical stuff. That's. <coughs> you can, yeah. And I think I remember Phyllis Matisse told me uh, just yesterday yesterday that um, they're starting to uh, work at Sunlight to, uh, on the rebuilding of that site. Is that ongoing as we speak? It's great. Today. Very good. Get it before the snow flies. Yeah. And in parallel, Garfield County is working on Lookout Mountain right. at this exact same time as well. So, this is great. This is this is a great effort valleywide, and the, the uh, our ability to service these numbers, um, and the fact that we have the multitude of counties involved, um, you know, really makes it exciting. You know, to to be actually working collaboratively on this level 
is something you know that just makes such great sense to the people that we all serve. So I think it's exciting. Yeah. Not that we always understand what Kara's telling us, but we do try. Yeah. Yes, Steve. What I'm saying. Karen, can we get uh, a copy of this PowerPoint? Absolutely. If you could send that to Kevin, that would yep. be great. Yeah, that'd yeah. be great. Yeah, great. Yeah, I was wondering if there was any other areas that we could cooperate in telecommunications. For instance, we had migrated to the 800 megahertz system for our emergency communications. And maybe you were already on that, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, th I think that, you know, we do these cooperation things with the Forest Service, and maybe there's other areas besides the broadband where we could do a thing, do a joint project that would be kind of like this, a synergistic thing. John, go ahead. There, there's some new cutting edge technology that we're looking at and promoting in reference to um, communications. And it's an unmanned aircraft that stays in the air 100 days at a time based on solar power, which relays all of the radio signals, et cetera, to all entities, which again will take the place of towers. And uh, they uh, range anywhere from 50 to 60,000 feet and stay in place, like I say, for 100 days, controlled by a computer and all the gyros and things that go with it. And it takes a day or two to service them, and they just end up a second one, bring the other one down, and you never have an interruption of communications. That's technology that, again, some people think that's space age, but <laughs> it is reality right now. And they're, they're trying to perfect it for wildfire as well as uh, uh, emergency communications. So between Center of Excellence and Rifle and also the Center of Excellence, and I'm not sure what they call theirs in Idaho, they're exchanging information and trying to make that happen. So, Steve, it opens up the entire region. And it's unfortunate that Mesa County decided not to go with this as well in <laughs> reference to this joint project because that would have taken in all of Mesa County as well. Debec yes. and, and on through. I always don't forget about my little place up there. It's called Sweetwater. Uh -huh. uh, up there, Sweetwater is a great little spot, and it's it got is. a tower as well. But it's on private property, and it take up and open up all of Eagle County uh, in that white shaded area. If it was Sweetwater <coughs> Tower comes online and has a direct line with uh, Lookout Mountain to Glenwood Spring, wow. that would really open it up. So. Those are on the table. We're thinking about those and, and also even more into the future. So we won't have to be digging trenches and putting cables in. We'll have, uh, again, things that see through smoke and clouds. Mm -hmm. Steve, our, our, uh, emergency, nine, our emergency communications are, is, uh, is a separate authority, and they're funded through a portion of the sales tax, Scarborough County sales tax. So, um, I think it's a great idea. Uh, it's not something that we we're, we have it, we're a little bit hands off uh, on that. But we're all still on the same frequency. It's all 800 megahertz, so therefore we can talk to you from here and you can talk to us from there. So that's what's important, which we learned from Katrina and other huge incidents across the country when you aren't able to talk to your partners right next door, right across the bridge. And don't forget about 900. 1100 megahertz, et cetera, and you get into military stuff as well. Right. But uh, they're looking more at going to 900 megahertz too. Now that 800's in place, they, they figure they need better and faster communication, so they'll go up. And it depends on the FA, F FCC, FCC rules. But uh, 800. As long as they bring money with the required update, <laughs> you know, this is getting a little silly Rachel, sometimes. Rachel, you're dreaming now. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to fall on the backs of everybody here. I think that we're going to see more and more of having to go ahead and to fund everything ourselves to, yeah. to uh, be competitive as well as uh, moving forward and not being left in, into the past. So, yeah, In some cases, in the dark. As you say, put money away. Put it in the sock every year, 10%. Save it for a rainy day. The rainy day is going to be coming pretty soon. So. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay, any other questions on Brian? <laughs> I, just to, I just wanted to ask yeah. John, how, so how far out is this drone technology? Is, is there a, a actually being Actually being worked on now and working out the bugs in reference to uh, the different platforms and uh, all of the, um, should we say, programming. Uh, they do have to have certification, of course, to be up that high at, uh, out of the um, passenger lanes and everything else, but uh, they're working on that and they feel it's going to be very viable. We should see it. It's fascinating. We should see it in a <coughs> couple of years. Is what they're Greg, saying. Greg, that's the state of Colorado that's yes. working on it. Right. 
Okay. And we're trying to, you know, push ourselves ahead of everybody else. And we do have a bunch of aerospace people in Colorado and uh, our region. We need to utilize that. We need sure to make sure we support them. You and mentioned a rainy day was coming. Did you have a timeline on that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was the dry days. The dry <laughs> days we should be worried about. <laughs> being, a, being a farmer, I haven't had a measurable rain since April, and uh, my trees are suffering, my yeah. fruit trees. I need rain right now, but I see it as a, uh, a fiscal and political uh, rainy day where we have to help each other because nobody else is going to be around to help us. It's supposed to rain tonight, John. Are you going to bring that with you as you leave? I'm Bigger going to County go over the hill to see if Chafee County is getting it. If so, I'll hook it and bring it back. Back when you come back over. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So, Mr. Peacock, what did we have about cooperation between departments on human services? I, I think we have representatives. <coughs> sorry. I think we have representatives from both of our departments. Maybe we'll. So, ladies, please come up and introduce yourselves for the public. You sit there. <laughs> Putting you in the we're hot seat right in the middle. Yeah, we're, we're used <laughs> to this. It's fine. Uh, okay, Mary Bedarian. I'm the director of human services in Garfield County, and I've got a couple of handouts. I don't have a PowerPoint, but I'm going to send them in, in two different. Might be easier to. I'll go this way. This way. Okay. And I'm Mitzi Lettingham, and I'm manager of strategic partnerships for human services. Sitting in for Nan today. With Mary. Wonderful. We should say that Nan Sundin is celebrating a major birthday. She, she is. Yeah. She's um, having a delightful time somewhere cruising. We, we assume. Away. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> She's away. Yes. yes. <laughs> she hit 30, finally. <laughs> <laughs> finally, right? Tony, I'm so happy she to be really here. She will really like it when she comes back. <laughs> <laughs> so as those are going around, and Kevin, if you could uh, Pass my two back to me. <laughs> Let those go out you of my hands. You didn't keep one, Mary. <laughs> and here's a few extras if anyone for the public wants some. Thank you for you doing go. that. Of course. Yeah. Okay, okay, here's so. so first I wanted to say that um, there were, I, I think the North, well, I know, uh, the Northwest region of uh, human, departments of human services um, are known for our, collab our high level of collaboration. Um, we do many, many things regionally, as you can see from, from this, this list, and uh, I think we're the, I know, we're the envy of an, a number of other um, regions. And as I go through this, and Mitzi, please jump in. As I go through um, this list, I'll, I'll point out some of those uh, areas that are unique, um, specifically just to, to this region. So um, if you want to start with the first uh, on the Garfield, the Garfield County logo. Um, this is just a list of our current um, IGAs, MOUs, and uh, regional services with Pitkin County. Um, I'll go through them briefly, at, just with a brief explanation as we go, go <coughs> down. Um, as you can, can see, um, some of these are the, the larger contracts that we um, service in an entire region, including Pitkin from Garfield. Um, the, lettering in the green at the bottom, those are services that, that you purchase directly from Garfield County. So those, uh, those should be familiar to you. They're um, mm -hmm. uh, IGAs and, and um, specifically for those services. So starting at uh, the, the top, um, thank you. Nice. Should, should have gotten with you ahead of time, John. That's okay. <laughs> oh, that's great. great. That's wonderful. We're, we're advancing in our new room. We just, we just did a major <laughs> training for John this morning, so we're, we're testing him right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's wonderful. I'm a little slow on that. Oh. Okay. Watch. Okay, watch. Very good. Okay, so the, um, the first two program um, areas uh, at the top um, are our core services uh, programs, and that's, of course, in the Department of uh, Division of Child Welfare. And, and what does the TX and stand for? I know uh, it's not I'm Texas. sorry, I'm, I'm an old therapist. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it's, that's, sh that's short for treatment. Okay. Sorry. Okay, yes. that's good. So going back to <laughs> Texas. <laughs> One of those acronyms that TX, <laughs> they okay. still use it. Yeah. Thank yes. you. Yeah. Okay, so um, those are the uh, core services uh, contracts. Um, under the core service plan. So the, the totals that you'll see are, are for the core service plan, that in, and that includes Garfield, Pickens, Eagle, and Summit counties. Um, 
we are the Con Garfield County is the contract uh, administer we provide contract administration support mm -hmm. and we're the the fiscal agent there so our um, business services ad administrator um, supports the the contracting obtains the licenses will um, make outreach calls uh, follow up on the contract services part and uh, we serve as the fiscal agent uh, as well for both the mental health contracts and the substance abuse treatment contracts in the core services plan. So those are our two um, areas that we collaborate. Um, oh, Mary, can I interrupt for a second? So yes, we, of we act as the agent, but we have different. I mean, there's a, we have employees. Yep. Pickens County has employees that then yes. um, that coordinate on this or, or do the work in their own county. So exactly, sure. by by county. And Missy, jump in here, yeah, at any time. So, um, and when we, uh, when I say we um, help with the contract administration, a lot of it is that the co the individual counties, like right. say Pickens right. County, will identify the providers mm -hmm. that. Um, right, in core services, typically it is your uh, adult and family services, your child welfare mm -hmm. teams that, really um, contract with local uh, mental health therapists in the community and other entities who will see the families that we serve. And so it really is uh, an important service to extend what we can provide for families. And um, so our team would manage those contracts, yes. you know, individually. Yes, yes. Thank yeah. you. But there's a, a wide variety of services that there, are provided. There is. We've, um, I think, the, the biggest change that we've seen or that well we've been responsible for in the last um, number of years is the number of county designed right programs right. under core services it, I don't know if, if you knew or recollect that the core services plan um, can sometimes be narrow and limiting the the state does allow for county design services that that better right. meet the needs of, of Pickin and Gar Garfield County um, and examples of, of that would be um, equine therapy. Right. There's uh, music there's a, therapy. Just music, actually, there's just a some, range of, yes, yes, more more, um, if you will, alternative kinds of approaches with families that seem to work really well for some mm -hmm. people. So we can pay for that with the core services. Yes. Yep. Okay. So um, next, going down to the um, the senior programs. Um, Garfield is the uh, provides the administration and uh, again we're the fiscal agent for the um, CSBG grants and in um, and the acronyms no we try to oh, explain I, them for I the public. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> sure. Just yes. Say what they uh, are. Okay, the community <laughs> services block grant. Thank you. Yes. Sorry. Um, and the the figure that I included there is just what goes to Pickens County. We um, right. right. So that. Um, we do have uh, 36,000 of that goes to um, Garfield County, which we um, also manage, of course, and that goes to the traveler services. Um, and Mitzi, would you like to yes. talk a little bit about what you do with that? Uh, exactly. That? Um, and you all may remember, I've come before you before with uh, Community Services Block Grant. We have, you know, every county, or many counties, I don't know if every mm -hmm. county in the state, uh, usually qualifies for this money from the Department of Local Affairs, federal to state. And, you know, for many years in Pickin, we have used our allocation, which when I started was much smaller than this. It was about $11,000, so not too much. But we've used it to provide emergency food at the homeless shelter. We've used it to support programs in child welfare and seniors, for instance. But then uh, lately, we had in our contract with, um, when we were doing the contract ourselves, we were managing uh, a dental and a rental program. But in 2016, we uh, were encouraged by the state folks, being a small county, to consider um, partnering, if you will. They call it pairing, a paired, shared county management, if you will, administration, with a larger county to relieve us of the burden that was coming down the pike, actually federally through to the state, for really a, 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 a very extensive administrative burden, if you will, uh, managing uh, advisory committees, um, having to uh, uh, actually uh, 
manage, I think, 25 administrative pieces. And so they said, why don't you, if you couple, then you would have fiscal administrative support with, let's say, Garfield, mm -hmm. as we did, mm -hmm. and then you can provide your program, but just work together with Garfield County, and they will manage all of the paper and the money flow with the state. So actually, I think it's been very successful since we began this in 16, but our program is not seniors. Uh, we actually continued with the three-year contract providing dental services, so individual dental services to folks that qualified. and. Um, so, and also rent, but now for the 2018 contract, we are now providing staffing support to really bolster that area and economic assistance that we feel is so important, which is outreach. Outreach and uh, making sure that folks that qualify for our services are getting the services. So primarily food assistance and all other programs, we, we have been, basically a little bit um, <coughs> below the radar in meeting our um, and meeting our benefits outreach for folks that qualify. So now we have a dedicated staff person who works in the economic assistance program and she is partly funded completely by our allocation at CSBG, which Garfield helps us manage. And I sit on the advisory council as a Pitkin resident. And so I attend the meetings that are required. Tripartite board. It's really worked well, and I think it's really brought us closer to understand. Even though we have a different program design, just mm -hmm. understanding how you use CSPG and what mm -hmm. results you see, and then us sharing what we do. It's it's. I think it's just creating a lot of good symmetry mm -hmm. for us. I, I, yeah, I so agree. That's and, yes. As I mentioned before, we um, ours totally goes to the the traveler uh, transportation right, service. Right, right, right. Service and. Uh, and ours goes and to staffing to benefits staffing. outreach. Right. So, yeah. okay. So that um, for the next uh, area um, is our child care, and this there are, are two parts to the the child care makeup in Garfield County, and um, we have for years had the child care quality quality um, services that. Um, we provide primarily through um, TANF uh, reserves, um, and we've always also provided child care licensing services to, to Garfield County, um, and um, somewhat to, for Eagle and Pickin. Um, we took this on, we, we volunteered with the state I, um, a, a few years ago. They were um, proposing that Goodwill uh, provide the child care licensing services in Pickin County, which made no sense to any of us. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so we strongly advocated um, that we would take this on, that Garfield County would take on the, the child care licensing in Pickin County. We had, had done it as a courtesy um, and that we formally do that. So that uh, contracted um, amount that you see is, the, is money that the state pays us for state licensing to license child care homes, um, child care centers, and camps. And in Pitkin County, um, camps um, take up a, a much larger right. portion of, of our time um, than in, in Garfield, it's more the homes and centers. Rachel? Yeah, I, I just was kind of wondering, how do you uh, loop in and network with the City of Aspen's sure. Kids First program? Because I think mm -hmm. they, also license child care centers within the city limits. And so are, are there working relationships there? So um, yes, they're very, very strong working mm -hmm. relationships. So if you look at your um, second page there, I, I list just a couple of them. I do mention um, okay. Kids First. And, and um, what they, Kids First helps both counties, um, you know, and um, as does the ECN with, um, preparation for licensing. So our child care quality um, portion of our child care workers um, helps with the, the preparation for licensing as well as um, maintaining quality and improving the quality. So that's how that's how they're they're linked um, together. So there's but no the state redundancy that no, duplication. No, no. no the okay. state licensing where you have to get a state like that that's done 
through contract with Garfield County for um, mm -hmm. Okay. Or pick an Angara yeah, bill. And so would that include the City of Aspen program? Yes, of course. As well? it's so in so County. Kids First works with you for Absolutely. that. Absolutely. We Kids work First closely together. Kids First, just my understanding, doesn't actually do the licensing. Do the licensing, correct. They just right. prepare people for licensing sure. and they keep right. teachers with continuing education opportunities right. um, so they can provide a higher quality of care. Yes. That's exactly right. Great. And Thank you. I uh, think this started out with the <laughs> Tri County region mm -hmm. with the first one we used to have, World Resort region. Mm -hmm. And it was through McIreland that we first started this because it was a common cause. And that's what kicked off Rural Resort Region taking on um, regional issues. And childcare was the first one because everybody had to go to Denver for any education or anything that get kept you licensed or get your tr director's credentials. Everybody had to go to Denver for things. And it just wasn't feasible for people who, number one, aren't getting paid a lot of money to do amazing jobs that they do, and number two, was difficult for them to take off from work to have to travel to Denver to continue being able to do what they do. So that's what first started off, and that was many years ago. So it's oh, nice to see you. how it's transformed in this great cooperative effort, because we all know the need for child care. <laughs> oh, absolutely, and just the, the, the quality and amount of training that's right. available exactly through the collaboration. That's great. Mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm. We appreciate great. it, as so. do all of our children and grandchildren. Is that, yes. Yeah, Tom, go ahead. Is there but isn't there somebody from Kids First or that is doing outreach in Garfield County trying to reach those, or am I? Early, yeah, early Childhood yes. Network and yes. 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 Okay. ECN. Yes. And we now that have a child care regional them. task force, well, Valleywide Task Force, yeah. that meets in Basalt, because yes. I've just started sitting on that. Mm -hmm. And um, that's great, and, and trying to see what we can do on, on a regional basis. And there's mm -hmm. representatives from Garfield, or from Eagle County there. Exactly. So that we're all touching base. Okay, so um, moving off of child care um, down to the Northwest Options for Long-Term Care. I, um, this <coughs> actually, we're, Garfield is the single entry point for a nine-county region, and, and Pickin is one of those counties. That's why that um, contract is, is so high. The, that's the, that's the, and the, and <laughs> SCP is we what, wish, right? SCP is yes. single entry single point. Single entry point, yes. Of LTC long-term care. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. Sorry about the acronyms. You, it's okay. You got to fit into the grid. Right I understand. Yes. That. Right. And so you yes. carry that for all these counties. You're for, managing. Yeah. Yes. For yeah. for the nine county region that right. um, is is listed there, um, and of course the options for long-term care is for uh, Medicaid recipients, and uh, we work with folks in in nursing. One example we work with folks in nursing homes. Um, we need to meet with them regularly to make sure that they want to remain in nursing home care if they um, want to move down, um, or I shouldn't say down, to a different level if they want to go home mm -hmm. and um, live supported at, at home, then we work with them to make sure that, that that happens. And we have case managers that cover all of these, all of the, the counties that are in the region. Do, do we have, by chance, I don't know if you know the answer to this, but when you're talking long-term care, mm -hmm. do we have any LTACs, Rachel? That's a long-term acute care. Um, LTACs, they, they, it's, it's like if you, for example, when my husband was in the hospital in a coma, um, I got, was given 24 hours notice to take him out of the university hospital, um, CU Hospital over in Aurora, and find an LTAC for him to go to. I had no idea what that even meant. Um, and there, uh, the, my understanding, this was eight years ago, eight and a half years ago, there were no LTACs on this side of the, 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 in the Western Slope. So it doesn't sound like it's a familiar term to people because it was a very difficult situation because it was either downtown Denver or Utah. So I'd have been driving Don's truck to That's Utah to get those mileage in. But this can, yeah. yes, absolutely, this, this can, can be a, a challenge, but, but that is a good example of, of something that our, say our local hospitals are referring to our single entry point case managers um, to try all, and find all of the time. Yeah, yes, they have, the time. yes, they have someone no. who's exiting um, the hospital and needs certain levels of, of, of care recommended uh, medically and it's our responsibility to, to work with the Great patients time. and find that the appropriate level of care. Okay, any questions on? Questions on that one? Yeah, okay. Um, the the two um, I put the two in green at at the bottom. Those are um, services that uh, Pickens County purchases, um, <coughs> or a portion at least, 
purchases a portion directly um, of. So those are listed in green. Um, I'm going to take child support uh, next, and I, I think all of you are familiar with that. We, um, for many years, have contracted mm -hmm. directly, or Pickens County has contracted directly with Garfield County for all the child support uh, services um, in our counties. So that, um, I think, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> okay, um, and that uh, we have currently have about a hundred uh, clients um, that we serve in in Pickens mm -hmm. County. Mm -hmm. And uh, the I saved uh, one of my favorites for for <laughs> for, for last. M Missy's chuckling here. Um, but it's such a good one. It, it is. It's <laughs> it's yeah. It's the one I think that our region is is probably the mo most proud of. Um, and that's under the Economic Security Division. So that's all the public assistance payments programs. Um, and this is the Northwest Regional uh, Collaborative. We, this took many years um, of persistence and tenacity by the Northwest Region of Directors to put this together. Um, we started working on this uh, two administrations <laughs> <laughs> bringing them to the table uh, bring the state to the table um, we a need that we have and continue to have in our rural counties but um, no longer have in the Northwest region is for regional based training and regional based support in the economic security <laughs> division so the collaborative specifically, uh, that goes to cover a traveling technician, which we all pay into that technician's salary. That technician is, is housed in Garfield County and is a part of our training uh, program there. Um, that technician responds to referrals um, from any of the counties in the Northwest. And typically those are vacancy crises um, in the small counties, if you lose one or two technicians, you're, you've got a problem meeting your performance measurements, meeting the um, needs of our customers. Um, it, it's, it's a real problem. And we have had, uh, I can think of two counties who more than once have lost everyone, three counties, <laughs> who, have, who have lost everyone. And that tech and then will then go into that county, um, be the presence be the actual presence of servicing customers' needs, um, take those cases, work those cases. We have security to all of the counties in the region. Um, keep up with the backlog. We have workers um, designated back in Garfield County to work those, to work the cases, keep up with the backlog while the new technicians are being trained and, and brought up um, to speed. And uh, Mitzi, I, you had a direct example oh of my that. Goodness. Just, uh, yes, <laughs> yes I, I really want to um, <clears throat> commend this program, which really provided us, Picking County, the ability to move forward when we lost, uh, well, we were um, basically relieved of our contract with Eagle County Economic Assistance in October of 2016. And we so we're an example of a program that had no, no depth, no ability to move forward um, to provide services to our customers at the end of the year. And we turned to mm -hmm. Garfield, we turned to this, this program, and Mary so graciously and generously said, you're a top priority, we've got you covered, we're gonna have folks, technician come in, exactly as you mm -hmm. said, to provide the face of your program, to provide your services, and uh, we will basically hold your hand while you get set up. And literally, it saved us. It saved us. This program was worth its weight in gold when we had to develop our own economic assistance. And so very glad, to, very glad for this collaboration. And I think it really showed itself to be worth its money and what it is. Well, there's a time. huge learning curve and training curve oh. for for people oh, who come in to take this job. Tremendous yeah. hugeness of it. It's not like you can just hire somebody and they walk in tomorrow unless they've had years of experience. So no. it's a benefit to everybody while you're gearing up with a new employer or a new 
Yes, and so Garfield mm -hmm. was just, they did everything for us and just bent over backwards and were available and were there and, yeah. you know, it was great. Mm -hmm. You should be proud of it. <laughs> we are. We're very proud of it. <laughs> yeah, we wanted to continue, and it's just amazing how it worked. Well, this is especially important when there are changes to the programs that roll out. Absolutely. Yeah. Suddenly you have to get them yes. to people in uh, nine different counties, you know, at a relatively fast speed to make sure we're all on our timeliness uh, functions and everything like that. So a very good program to have started, and thanks for your tenacity in seeing it through. Well, I guess I, I want to echo that. It really, Mary, you're so humble, but it really is, Mary. You really <laughs> went to bat for this program, <laughs> and you got it going. And so, really, it's it's Good a job. testament to your oh. tenacity. I don't think you really grasp the, the magnitude Thank of you. what we're That's doing, right. not, not Garfield mm -hmm. County, but the state of Colorado, mm -hmm. we're working together. Mm -hmm. In the human services, um, application of federal programs and what have you. There are only 10 states out of 50 that actually do the work. The other 40 yield to the federal agency to run all mm -hmm. programs. Colorado was one that stepped forward first and said we wish to run our own programs. And that's the birth of many of the uh, collaboration and working groups that we have now. We're really um, trying to get the other states to see the value in that because you can customize the program. Mm -hmm. You can do many, many things that the federal agencies don't even think about or won't even think about. And so uh, uh, it is a true pat on the back to Colorado and all the counties that have come together mm -hmm. and said we can administer all these federal programs. And then the state was wise enough to allow the counties to do it. I remember when we were all mm -hmm. worried about state employees, Mary, uh, way back when. Yes. And uh, every other year, every other <laughs> I've been around long enough that the state finally yielded and said, "You know what? We can't do it. The counties, you take it on." And we have shown everyone that the counties are actually doing more and more, coming up with better ideas and working better together with the same dollars and the same programs, yeah. and actually developed yeah. other programs. So when you go back to these other states, Rachel and Steve, and, and uh, <laughs> what amounts to you'll see that in these human services programs uh, at NACO and, and throughout the states, they look at us and say, you do what? <laughs> you have what programs? How did you do that? So uh, be, be proud that Colorado stepped forward and said that we're going to run the programs and not allow the federal agencies to do it. I just didn't know if you guys knew that, but only 10 states. No, I, did, I didn't even nation. know that. I didn't know I didn't the numbers. I knew that right. was true, yeah. but I didn't know the numbers. <coughs> and thank you for bringing those points up, Commissioners, because this that they do very much tie back into the not just the collaborative, but the whole training um, picture mm -hmm. um, for the ac economic sec um, security uh, divisions. Um, I think as, if, as you pointed out, uh, Rachel, they're um, – the collaborative, one of the reasons the collaborative can be so successful, and I'm going to brag on my commissioners a little bit here for their foresight. I'm sorry, I have to do this. But, we pay um, her extra. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah. yeah. Slipping slip her that $20. Yeah. Right. Bill. <laughs> so the, um, regionally, um, there was a great need for county, local control, locally focused training. The Western Slope had nothing. All of our... Um, programs had to go to Denver to get all of our, our of our training. Um, we volunteered to be the site for the Child Welfare Training Academy and with the Northwest Collaborative, um, I think I, I think it was you that pointed out that the, the training and, and you that the training um, is it's never ending and it changes quickly. Um, so with having the benefit of the Child Welfare Training Academy, um, we were looking at the Staff Development Center and saying, now wait a minute, we train our own people here and let's formalize that. And the only way to formalize that is to become certified through the state as sta with the Staff Development Center to have a similar site to as the, the Child Welfare Training Academy is for the Staff Development Center. And we're the only site in, in the state that does this, and I hope soon, I 
keep, <laughs> we just had Reggie out a few months ago to um, try and push that this be, this go statewide because it just makes so much sense. So um, we also have now the, a for, the formal, and this again took years, Staff Development Center Training Academy. So it's a Staff Development Center on the same site as the Child Welfare Training Academy when um, our commissioners built the new admin building and rifle, they dedicated a large space on our second floor just to train. So we have both centers and we're the only region in the state so far that has that and it, it should be, you're right, um, Commissioner Martin, it should be taken um, through, throughout the state. So we, we do, we offer, and I brought, if you wanna pass this around, um, this is a training manual that all of your workers go home with, your new workers go home with. Um, my staff wanted to, to mm -hmm. show off their work a little bit and, and you can see. Well, this prevents this our new staff from having to travel to Denver. To Denver. That's, yeah. that's right. So that in yeah. itself yeah. is cost savings and time savings yes. oh, yeah. for our employees and for the county government is, is enormous. Mm -hmm. Plus, there's just something kind of different when you learn about your community in your community rather than learn about things outside of it because they don't always Right. Connect. <laughs> Absolutely. I think, this is, yes. I think this is great. Well, it's a nice well, manual. Patty works so, so well down in, uh, at the training center for the region that we, did, we as our own employees, didn't have a spot to go to training, so we had to do a second <laughs> class. But, uh, uh, we, we Sorry were, about that, John. It's okay. That's, that's fine. Get we, there first. The more the better. <laughs> what, what amounted to <laughs> was the need is out there, yes. and uh, we took right. in a right. whole bunch of people, oh, and yeah. they scheduled it. And what have you, and then all of a sudden, Mary said, wait a minute, I stand <laughs> here to go, and we're here. So we made an extra effort to get them tra them trained as well. So that was a pat on the back for Mary, and finding space and, and uh, twisting a few arms in reference to the training center. This is amazing. Spoiled as, as a region. The, the other thing that, and I'm a firm local control director here, the other um, very important part of this, it, and part of the reason it took so long to to become accepted by the Staff Development Center um, is we feel very, very strongly that this training needs to be done by county employees. Um, and that mm. that's the case here at, mm -hmm. at our Staff Development Center. The, they're all active, they're all working in their cases. Um, mm -hmm. They're yeah. working all of the cases in the region, they're working your county cases when you mm -hmm. have an issue. So they're familiar with the county work um, and they go beyond. You don't get that training manual thrown if you go through the Staff Development Center training. Um, that's something that... The screen saves are really great because that's what you end up hearing from people is that I didn't know how to get from this screen to that screen or, or where is the place on this screen to plug that in. Right. And right. That, that's really nicely done. Right. And as they're training, they're on their laptops and they're, they, they can work their own cases when they're in training. If there's a question, if there's mm -hmm. a problem, um, they're they can there. Get, they're there. They can get help for that too. And um, as you know, from you know, we all learn differently. But that hands-on being able to attach it to a real situation is critical. And I, the counties do that do that best. Um, and we, as a region, um, feel very, very proud of this program. I, I the, the Northwest um, is is creative, and we I think we came up with a real pragmatic program that, that works for, most importantly, our customers. Well, you um, need to be really proud in the fact that you actually got the government to do something that makes such great sense. So the, <laughs> it wasn't easy. <laughs> no, trust me, we know, we so know, that, we keep trying, but you, right. you accomplished it, so big kudos to you. That's, that's amazing and a benefit to all of us. Well, Patty, we can't do that because it makes sense. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Have you heard that once before, John? I've heard that a, a lot. Uh, yeah. It makes too much sense, do and you can't do that. That hasn't worked either. So uh, yeah. that, that's why we have to challenge authority. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Not you, John. Every, <laughs> every day, every day. George. So talking about regional efforts, you know, at last year when we met, um, one of the issues that came up was the uh, the issue around detox and the need for a regional detox uh, facility. I just wonder, uh, have we made any headway uh, between our counties? <laughs> Well, the, like, I see John pointing, so this may be an issue that is a... Uh, it is a hot about. topic, George. It is a hot topic, that's for um, sure. We are uh, 
<laughs> We've recently expanded the bed in our detox up here. Um, we are going to be having a conversation with Valley View uh, to try and provide uh, some relief through a partnership. That is very much in its infancy at this point, so we don't have any details to, to share with you. And it's why you haven't gotten a briefing on it yet is um, those conversations are, are just beginning. Uh, the regional detox center in Grand Junction uh, was housed in St. Mary's Hospital. That has closed uh, pending the opening of the West Springs facility is my understanding. And so right now, uh, particularly in, in Garfield and I think the Roaring Fork portion of Eagle County, that's created a gap. And a lot of that gap is, I, I believe, being filled at Valley View right now and probably your jail. Uh, with a lot of case management. Yeah. Yeah. Mostly so, in Valley View. Um, we, we are going to have some near-term conversations about being able to utilize some of the uh, additional capacity that we've built in partnership with Valley View Hospital. And Good. there will be more to come on yeah, that. Great. And I, th I think, George, one of the issues we have in our county is, it, is that our municipalities are, are not stepping up, and, and yet that's, that is where the mm -hmm. issue is. I mean, it's, uh, we're not, I mean, our sheriff is, and they bring, they have some issues, but nothing like you, you would have in Carbondale or Glenwood Springs mm -hmm. or Rifle. And so, um, they just soon, they just soon not, just it's not their issue, but it is a um, mm -hmm. countywide issue. It's, it's, it's actually a statewide. Yeah, and managing now, managing those facility. those clients mm -hmm. um, in a regular hospital scenario, having done that for many years at Aspen Valley Hospital, is very difficult. And very it's extremely for the yeah. hospital business in general. So I mean, yeah, so working together with the local hospitals to to try and find a solution for everybody else. And don't forget Grand, uh, Grand River Hospital down there. They have their challenges in Rifle as well, but uh, they're a little different. They're an ad valorem-based uh, hospital, and uh, Valley View and, and, and uh, Aspen Valley are a little different, but they still have a, a certain clientele that come in there as well that they have to deal with. So right. They're working on it, but they'll be part of the uh, solution in the future. So we all have to remember that everybody's a player and there are lots of solutions out there. We just have to put them all together. Right. You know, uh, John has been our key negotiator on a lot of these agreements outside of what you guys work on, which mm -hmm. has always been great, mm -hmm. and um, developed a formula with the city based on usage, I think, primarily, but also other factors. And um, I think that you know, using a template like that to potentially show your municipalities of how this can happen. And the amount that a municipality charges for their liquor license is something that is a little bit discretionary. And so they can say, hey, this is where the cause is coming from, these bars that are open until 2 a.m. Your liquor license rates will go up to help them have to pay for the detox facility. So, you know, maybe that there's a, a working model out there that will help bring them along. Yeah. And I, I was impressed with the, the group that's running your, your detox center, so. Yeah. They seem to be, if they seem to do, you know, a good job at not just being a detox center, but at recovery as well. That, so. That's been the key difference yes. for all of us is the, as they call it, the warm handoff uh, to treatment potentials as people are, are leaving. Right. Great. All and I would, I would like to uh, just acknowledge Mary in, in the fact that she was key. She was an influencer in bringing the Master's in Social Work Program, DU Master's in Social Work Program, to Glenwood Springs, which means that... Uh, Colorado Mountain College? No, DU. DU, yeah, yeah. but it's, it, they, they run classrooms out of Colorado Mountain, Mountain College, and it's a, a program where so we can train our social workers here on the Western Slope again, and so that, that was... I At 55 percent of the main campus. Yeah, <laughs> it, it a great, great uh, oh, savings as well. So yeah. that's an 1102 that's grand, great. Patty. That's the old A-frame that sits down uh, downtown. Used to, be, oh, yeah. used to be the Chamber of Commerce right. building. Yes. The county owns a building. Rachel in the works park. there. What we yes. did was to revamp it and then bring in DU to do oh, their yeah, master's program. Rachel. They take their exams there as well. Yeah, Plus I've they been there for staff. a while now because Rachel just yes. had a baby, but so she's not there right now. Yep. <laughs> yeah, she's back. back. Yeah, that's yeah. right. We're on our third cohort, and yes. um, we.
we have the good news is there are too many we have too many students that are needing to expand oh, so we're gonna we're gonna yeah. switch top <laughs> to bottom and bottom to our top that, that's one of the yeah, yeah, Ra discussions on, on the table rachel over from summit, oh. from summit county to do this we're going to turn yeah. the building mm -hmm. upside down and, and get more that's classrooms that's and great. more uh, more space for everyone but uh, it's a great program plus <laughs> There's also a playground that's fenced in there that the licensed <laughs> uh, daycare folks can see how to have a licensed daycare uh, <laughs> exercise facility and off-street parking. So, <laughs> uh, You're just a salesman over there. Well, we have to. We, we have to use all of our assets. And then I was going also going to say uh, back there there was a finance director who has gone through being <laughs> fiscal agent for Garfield County on many projects. And she's probably breathing a sigh of relief because she doesn't have to go through being the fiscal agents on federal programs, right, Ann? Because I know the Garfield County Finance Department will do an amazing job. Yes, they do. Yes, they and do. And we, we are so sorry, yeah, right, that we now have her with us. Well, yeah, it was a good coup on your part. Yeah, so. great. <laughs> but that's what we, that's what we have to do. a new building for her just to have a new office. Yeah, she's got a new building. That's true. Yeah. Yep, so. You have the other the other Jake, list. Yeah, I, yeah I, I won't go through all of that. I just uh, it, you can read it for yourself. But just wanted to point out a, a couple of things that, that speak to the collaboration, not just with um, Garfield and Pitkin, um, but with with all of our counties. And I, th I think this year really kind of stands out. Um, your director Nan Sundin applied for a healthcare policy and financing grant um, to work with the, the training ac academy to provide supervisor um, training as well. There is no supervisor training for economic security uh, division supervisors. So um, the, the region identified a need. Route County actually um, wrote the application. I'm getting Nan's things mixed up with the RAE. Uh, wrote the so application. We all supported it. And so, th so that's another way that, that we work collaboratively. You know, we, think collaboratively, we think regionally, and um, our, our focus is, is always uh, in that direction. Um, and Nan wrote the Hickpuff grant uh, mm -hmm. right. supports the West Mountain Regional Health Alliance and will run through, through there and benefit um, Eagle, uh, Garfield, and Pickin uh, counties and their relationships with uh, the REs. So um, there are a number of, of efforts going around going around all the time that, that we all put uh, energy into and uh, that Well, that all. opens up the fact that I should have thanked you when I gave you that wonderful gift that we found hanging in our walls, um, the Mountain Family Family Health Program that yes. we now are doing in um, Absolutely. in Basalt. So, um, yeah. It's going to be great valley-wide um, timing for the county with the buildings and everything, just all the pieces mm -hmm. came together in that puzzle. And um, we thank you for, for being a part of that with us. It's huge. It's going to be yeah. big. Yeah. You can't wait for the grand opening of that one. Yeah. Yeah. And I believe they're actually having a luncheon tomorrow for anyone who would like to attend at Mountain Family Health uh, at noon on Cody Lane. Yes. Uh, this is kind of healthcare week. And on the other side? It's yeah. on their current location right. on the ABH building. Yeah. Yeah. But there will be some discussion about the new facility and how we're uh, all working okay. to fund it to try to get it open on time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think Steve and I are hauling hay. Yeah. <laughs> Getting ready. No, you sold all your cows, didn't you? Mm -hmm. All right, so you don't have to haul hay. He, he can still haul hay, though. Yeah. yeah. This might not be his own. It's up yeah. at a premium right now, thank Dirty goodness. Dirty cats, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we've, we've called that <laughs> yeah, we've, stock, we've called that stock liquidation sales, yes, uh, <laughs> ending uh, feeding all these animals. So, anything else? Any other questions we might oh. have? This is great. This, you know, just... <clears throat> Kind of makes sense of there's just so many, you know, issues that, that come before us with this, and so it's nice to have this brought back to us so we can refresh our memories and find out what we're all, all the great things that we are doing. Mm -hmm. And, and Patty, I, uh, we also have a couple folks here to talk about our health partnerships to tag on to this. Yes, also. we do. A little collaboration going on there too, big time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. But John, that's not on my agenda. Can I? That's why I jumped. Out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he tells me to stick. She, they're chair. sitting in the back there, Patty. <laughs> that, that's part of your crowd back there. I know. Yeah. I know. Come on up forward, ladies and please. Okay. I'm going to swap places here. 
Thank you, Mary. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks thank you. Mary. Yeah, nice very to see nice you. work. Oh yeah, don't let Mary forget that. But, yeah, that's Mary's training book. Oh. Her training back, her manual. Mm -hmm. you get your, get, I'm gonna go one again. John, do we want to put one of those on Elmo too? Uh, I'm an expert. Oh, it's <laughs> it's right there. Good afternoon. Um, I'm Yvonne Long with the I'm Garfield County Public Health Director, and my presentation isn't quite as detailed as Mary's because we don't have quite as many programs and a lot of that money passing through what we do. But I would like to start out by saying that it has been a long history of collaboration between Garfield County Public Health and Pitkin County Public Health before it was even Pitkin County Public Health and it was <laughs> Community Health Services. So we continue to have strong relationships with both still Community Health and with the newly formed Pitkin County Public Health which we're very excited about and I just want you to know that you guys hired the best public health director we that you could so. have. <laughs> we, we feel like she's pretty awesome. We're good at snagging this. <laughs> you guys are. You really, you really are. <laughs> Um, so one of the some of the things that we work on together and that we have MOUs and IGAs with is um, the first thing was WIC, which is Women, Infant, and Children, and we've done that for about the last four to five years, and we'll do that and through September, I believe, and Eagle County will take it over from us at that point. And the only reason that for that is is because of a Mid Valley presence. They felt that that was right you know, important, and so we're more than happy to, we've been more than happy to provide that service. We'll continue to step in where and whenever we're needed and um, back up, what have you, but it's been a, a very good partnership. So and we, you, so I, I want to give kudos to Garfield County for doing, sorry, I'm, I'm Karen Kenneman, I'm the public right health here. director for Pitkin <laughs> County. I haven't <laughs> met you. either of you before. Yeah or you. <laughs> um, and so we really appreciated everything Griffith County was providing and providing a qu real quality service. And when we talked with the WIC director and talked with Yvonne, they were like, they were so easy. They said we can continue to do it or we're okay if you, if in essence, if you take the contract away. And they really let us do the pros and cons and bring it to our board of county commissioners and let us feel like we made the right choice for our for our clients and so I just wanted to thank you for um, for all the work that you all did um, and have done and allowed us to, to really look at so like I said we've always had really strong partnerships and in collaborations and 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 that goes back to times when we had measles outbreaks mm. in both of our counties and both of our public health departments came together to mass immunize hundreds of kids in, in all the schools and so uh, we always work together, whether it's just on a day-to-day -day regular basis or in an emergency situation. One of the contracts that we have is that we deliver the state contract services for healthy communities, which is also known as EPSDT, which is Early Periodic Screening, Diagnostic, and Testing, <laughs> which is a really long name that has absolutely nothing to do <laughs> with what uh, that program is. It's basically an advocate. <laughs> it's basically don't, come from the don't go the there, Wyvon. <laughs> <laughs> don't it go there. From the feds. <laughs> that's a fe that's a federal agency it term. It is a federal oh, agency term that they have not changed. And but what that what that position is is actually when people go on to Medicaid, it's an advocate for them. They reach out to everyone who is newly signed up on Medicaid and make sure they understand what their benefits are and where they can go and who offers those services in our counties and such. So the state um, pays us a small amount of money to take over for, take on that for Pitkin County because it's not, the caseload isn't very significant at all, isn't very high. So we have, uh, we used to have someone come up about once a month and it kind of went to once a quarter and now because a lot of that is done by phone, it doesn't have to be face to face. Um, so we look at those reports and we revisit that on a pretty much annual basis to make sure we're meeting all the needs of everyone um, who qualifies for that. One of the other things that we do, and, and this is something that Karen recently took over from Eagle County, is the Regional Tobacco Coordinator, and that's through the STEP program, which is also federal dollars. Um, it's, it's actually it's tobacco program. tax, yeah, it's, it's Amendment 35, 35 dollars. Yeah, which is the state tobacco uh, education prevention program. So Karen gets a, I'm going to say a pretty small amount of money to um, 
oversee a regional coordinator and they are working on pretty a scope of work and we're in starting to integrate this new coordinator down into Garfield County to do all of that prevention and education work and so it will go from basically Aspen to parachute uh, with this and so we will house this regional coordinator about once a month in our offices and we'll get her on board to um, meet all the right partners and get into the right coalitions and into the schools and and make those connections as we uh, work to towards uh, just a scope of work of what's the best and she works out of your office here as well under Jordana with Jordana right mm -hmm. So th those are the main things that we continue to work. We um, recently, I'm sure you've been presented with your public health improvement plan, which we're required to write every five years and sort of like our guide of how we're going to do business, what needs to happen. We start out with our community health assessments, which are locally, and it, we get all of the buy-in from partners and businesses and schools and community members as to where they feel the gaps are. And so each community of Garfield, Pickin, and Eagle County went through that, and then we came together to write our public health improvement plan, which will guide us over the next five years. We came out with regional objectives. This, this does a great buy-in for all of us because on a national level, they're looking at public health agencies being able to work regionally because there's only so many pots of money to go around. <coughs> and so... Um, by being able to show that we work regionally, that we can develop objectives regionally to cover all of our areas, even though they're varied, our populations and demographics are varied, it opens us up to being able to apply for a lot more dollars, both state and federal-wise. So we're pretty happy and proud of those collaborations that we work together with Pitkin and Eagle County on, and it's, it's, it just makes our work worthwhile and a lot easier of being able to spread it out and have the depth of personnel over a three county area to, to do that and meet those goals. And then one thing I just added on here um, because we continue to do it but it's really through community health services our school based dental health program which is the smiles for students which I'm sure you are all very well familiar with so we are continuing that and while community health is housing the regional dental um, health coordinator and the administrator for the schools through that we have the administration and the billing and the contract the contract has to be run through a local public health agency so yeah yeah Rachel well uh, again, just tagging on that, one of the exciting parts about the Basalt Mountain Family Health is they will have dental operatories for the first time and not necessarily have to use the mobile lab in the future. Um, but what I was really going to comment about was, uh, you know, in general, uh, our population moves a lot within our valley in our area, you know, and people cross county lines a lot, whether it's for rental situations or whatever. And it's a little bit like uh, elk migration. People don't know where the county line is or isn't. And it's more about making sure there's no wrong door and folks that come in are, are uh, you know, able to access the services they need in an efficient manner and not get the runaround. So really appreciate this coordination. One, so can we come um, up with more projects? Let's come up with more projects. <laughs> well, one partnership we have with Garfield County that isn't with public health is that your um, clerk and recorder does our vital records, which is a really, it's a core public health service that we are required to do or assure that it's being done. So we appreciate that as well. And we have an IGA with, with um, that department. So. And for those of us who remember, vital records <coughs> used to be in the little red house, which is now where the police department is. <laughs> Patty, you're telling stories now. She would give you your birth certificates and all <laughs> yeah. that. I remember that. And then somehow everything got shifted to Leadville, mm. which didn't always make it quite as easy as spending money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Especially in the winter. Yeah. Is, is Pickin County, are you doing your restaurant inspections? I mean, yes. We, yes, they we, do. We yes. got it turned over to us as well. So Yeah, we do it. Actually, and that's in White Bonds. Yeah. Uh, and we do it doing for it Snowmass we and Basalt, and the city of Aspen does their own, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, we, we've often found it's more of a training program than a punitive program because there's so many turnover employees, and it's about taking the time with them so the new staff understands what's going on. 
a lot, but uh, given the state's lack of funding for such programs, uh, and uh, you know, we've heard horror stories where uh, a small coffee shop will get closed down somewhere on the eastern plains, and they'll make the repairs, but they can't reopen until the inspector comes back out. It could be two months, you know, and so you know, we just get far more effectiveness for our population by doing it ourselves. Although, you know, we kind of eat a certain amount of the cost of that in our general fund. That's that's kind of a preview to the rainy day. Yeah. <laughs> we better be able to do it ourselves and depend on each other instead yeah. of waiting for someone to come and rescue us. Yeah, yeah. that's true. And our program is pretty much based the same way. It's more education. Yeah. And um, then it comes down to the regulatory. regulatory. Mm -hmm. We have a certain amount of codes we have to follow. The of state course. Those codes we have to follow those, but we've really bent over backwards and in going in and teaching people and showing them the correct ways and going back and going back and going back. And you know, I think it's a lot further away than where any of us are at right now, but I have um, talked to our environmental health to say, can we get to a point where there is a, a training video movie that's you know two and a half hours long <laughs> and the new employees can come in and get some sort of certificate program for them too that you know you, you can take something with you that you've been through this program and be of benefit to them when they apply for new jobs but um, not to have to you know always recreate the wheel with each new restaurant and each little set of this one has 10 employees the next has 20 the next has six and and be able to have you know a couple times a year uh, a formal training class and send your employees and do we work through the restaurant do have that. okay i don't know that we do but we've <laughs> talked to our guys about that yeah, we do have that and we usually uh and it's usually a couple of times a year and it's usually one of them is up in the carbondale area um or so and then one of them is further down west it's called a food safety program and we you know i think we do something yeah and so not only do restaurant employees and such come through there but school pl employees child care workers sure. you know mm -hmm. just anybody who prepares and handles food or just moms even who want to have that we have a lot of calls about safe turkeys yeah <laughs> we have a lot of calls we're having a family reunion this this weekend and what's the safest way for us to transport food so how do we keep that potato salad how do we cold? keep that <laughs> potato salad cold yeah. don't serve it don't, don't, <laughs> thank you don't get it too high and make sure everything is above 165 degrees patty uh, <laughs> if it's hot there, there's one other I program bring dessert, John. yeah there's one other program that these girls do work with and also uh uh, the the human services and that happens to be the river bridge which we've supported tremendously it's a ninth judicial um, um, collaborative basically but river bridge for the sexually abused uh, children and what have you for uh, forensics exams counseling families and what have you uh, Pitkin County Eagle County Mesa County Garfield County and whoever else needs service that facility is in Glenwood Springs. We just, uh, again, purchased another building to house them for the expansion. I hate to tell you that wow. the need is growing, but I am sure glad that we, uh, and that happens to be all the local governments, have a facility and have, a again, a nonprofit now, uh, independent, not nationally supported, but uh, local folks running the organization also got nice recognition for being a fantastic but Yvonne has had to put up with the uh, loss of her parking lot, as well as physical space, as well as uh, Mary Bedarian. But uh, this, this is an expansion, and we hope that everyone will continue to use it. Um, another collaborative issue between all these counties, taking care of the important people, which happen to be the ones we represent, and that's all our citizens. And these are the little guys that have no voice. Yep. So don't walk away from that one. Uh, um, if uh, you might get a get approached or whatever and get somebody on those boards such as a, the river bridge board need representation don't hesitate to step up and get somebody on there because it's a very valuable program okay. thanks john ladies anything else thank you thank, thank you, you very much for your time yeah, nice to see you thank you Yvonne. all right mr peacock where are you moving me to now um, I believe we've already done the regional training center, so I believe we are on legislative issues, Patty. So the first biggie, these are suggestions. We aren't sure what you may have submitted to CCI for a legislative session next year. Issues. Um, 
We leave that up to Rachel and Steve. <laughs> They're always doing that. They have half a dozen of them. <laughs> Trust me, we try to. But we only talk about them with the Mountain District people, oh, oh, and right. you guys are the West, West District, District people. The so District. That's correct. we want to break down those barriers to communication. <laughs> so who wants to take the lead? It's not going to be me on the residential assessment rate. How? How? I think Rachel, this is. Um, this one is less me than John having put in, but uh, you know we know <laughs> there's ongoing there's Coming ongoing um, discussions and meetings about how to deal with Gallagher assessment rates. Uh, I don't know that there's any easy fixes. How did we? Are you on the task force um, from we're CCR? Having some of our staff try yeah. to track it, but no, I haven't okay. been able to go to uh, any of those. And meetings. there's a task force out of CCI that actually is working a meeting every other week, and they have mm -hmm. a whole bunch of stuff that they have discussed on the internet now. Yeah. Ginny Pinchino has a whole bunch of stuff that they've had different ideas, but I'm yeah. sure John's aware of that. Yeah, and Ann's going to be representing us uh, on, on that group. I think we've had some difficulties touching base on those um, meetings so far, so we need to get in touch with, with Ginny on that. But um, you know, I, I think the basics are the, probably the same for all jurisdictions, you know, residential development and uh, particularly in a lot of Colorado communities is outpacing the commercial development that valuation is, is following and depending how um, political subdivision boundaries are, are drawn, whether it be a municipality or a special district uh, or, or even in some cases a county, different political subdivisions are impacted um, differently if they rely on property taxes um, based on what their residential um, base is. And uh, I, I think the, the interaction with Tabor um, presents the next challenge, of course, because you now have multiple variables that are either driving your um, property tax uh, collections down with restrictions on what elected officials can do to, to provide the, the resources for um, the, the services. And so, um, you know, our, our legislative issue really did not propose a specific fix, but did propose, I, I think, um, continuing to work on the, the committees that, that you're referencing, um, John, and, and hoping that there would be um, some fix that would come out of that and I constitutionally it, it'll be difficult to know whether that can be a legislative or if it's going to have to be a, a It's vote. a challenge too and, and yeah. they're considering a, um, a constitutional question as well. Um, they're, they're exploring both avenues constitutional as well as uh, legislative so they have not come in on that question and how they would form that question yet. The other one, of course, is Bob Rankin and wanted to go ahead and put a stay of two years on uh, Gallagher, mm -hmm. um, and uh, as they did on uh, Taper, Amendment C and D and what have you, and then try and work out the difficulties in the next two years. But it's going to be an uphill battle. That's, it's, again, that's what that task force is. It is taking more than just elected officials. It's also taking um, folks that are uh, tax experts as well as Taper experts and on through. I think uh, uh, as a practical matter, I think we're going to see um, at least special districts and such. I think we're already seeing this pressure in Picking County mm -hmm. um, proposing more tax questions and kind of stacking the, the ballot with them, which um, you know makes everyone more vulnerable to, to success there. And, yeah, and the first special district was CMC in their attempt to do it last, uh, last ballot. Mm -hmm. And that question, no one really understood what they are, but I think you need to pull that back up, read it again, and do some more background check on uh, right. why they proposed what they did. Yeah. They're, they're going on a legal technicality in reference to that uh, it, they have the ability to do that already, and they just needed the vote of the people to reaffirm, but others challenge that and say you don't have the ability to do that at all. So it'll end up in court if it's successful. Yeah. I mean, from what I've heard, and, and Club 20's had some pretty detailed presentations, they focused their last uh, conference on it. Um, uh, you know, the, the issue is that prior to Tabor, people could reset their mill to collect the exact same amount of money even when Gallagher went down. 
But once Tabor came in place, you could not reset your mill to collect the exact same amount of money. You know, your mill would drop and you'd have to go to a public vote. And so that, that's what kind of created the problem. And we're seeing it's the statewide average of growth applied to areas that have no growth. And so that's what's driving it down. Uh, fire districts particularly are hurting <coughs> in these rural areas, uh, but recreation districts, school districts, and so on. And so at the end of the day, you're either going to have literally hundreds, if not thousands, of small districts going for individual votes, or you're going to see the state come up with something that matters <coughs> for all of us. And I've said it before, uh, I'll say it uh, any time I have a chance, I believe it's a movement that's going to have to be um, led by the business community. Mm -hmm. They're the ones seeing their rates go through the roof to carry uh, the residential rate falling. And most small business owners own residences too, you know, and that's where everyone keeps saying there's no way you're going to get people owning houses to vote for something that could raise their property tax. But at the same time, if the business community doesn't really take the lead on it, it will just sound like politicians want more money in their budgets, uh, electeds, and, and yet they are the ones who need to make that case because it really is hindering um, economic growth in rural areas to find out what your rate will be if you move to those areas. On top of the high cost of health insurance or other things, lack of broadband, I mean, it's really disadvantaging the rural areas of the state where it doesn't hurt the front range communities at all because they have the growth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and they're trying to fix it all at once when the state legislature is required by statute to adjust that rate every two years. Yeah. They have failed to do so in reference to the uh, residential rates. They have refused to do that, and now they're in a pickle because they haven't so done much it. At once. And so um, yeah. if you adjust it where it's supposed to be based upon the formula, it'll be a lot worse than it is right now. And we'll lose businesses left and right because they can't afford based on the again the uh, assessed evaluation at 29 percent okay so. what other ones do we throw in i think um there's yeah. health care was down here on the list but i'm not sure we were just talking um, about well we know that garfield's been particularly active uh also on the um, health insurance legislative front on yeah. the health insurance uh, That's totally yeah we put tom. yeah tom's on that, been one. Really active in that. I pre and i appreciate working with rachel on on that as well and and Dan Gibbs in Summit County has really stepped forward and yeah. uh, has been more or less the leader of our group. Uh, I thought I thought the reinsurance uh, bill that went through with uh, uh, Representative Rankin and Hamner uh, was a was a good bill, um, and, and it but it got shot down really by by the businesses and because there was an increase for business and, and there was an increase for governments as well. But yeah. it would have. Uh, provided 30% relief to our individuals, 30% or more relief to individuals uh, in rural Colorado and up to 20% relief for individuals in urban Colorado that have to buy individual coverage. And, and that reinsurance really was you get up to $100,000 in, uh, in expenses and another uh, on your health insurance and another policy kicks in. So. It, it it had some drawbacks, but I thought it was a, you know, we just need relief. I, I we have uh, people going without health, a lot of people going without health insurance in the individual market, and um, it, it's it's a it's potential for disaster for for a lot of those individuals. They go, I'm healthy, I can't afford a thousand a month, or my family can't afford two thousand to three thousand a month for health insurance, so I'm going to take the risk. And um, most of the time that works, but not. But there's always those yeah. those accidents or that unforeseen illness that comes along that then bankrupts somebody. Yeah. So um, it's an ongoing issue. Uh, our our legislators, our rural legislators, are aware of it. They're working on it, and uh, yet it's it's really an, a rural urban divide. It truly is. Yeah. So. Well, the, Tom has provided some excellent testimony as well as citizens from Garfield <coughs> County uh, explaining the problems. Um, I really do need to uh, point out that 
the uh, secondary county lobbying organization we helped form, uh, CCAT counties and commissioners acting together, had made it one of their priorities last year. And so they were working with Dan Gibbs to make sure he was well prepared. And it wasn't until much later in the session where I think CCI voted to be supportive of us as well. But we'd laid two or three months worth of groundwork before CCI got on board. And that's part of why we formed CCAT was so we could move more expeditiously and, and a little faster, be a little more nimble. Um, and we kept seeing that urban-rural divide where a number of communities on the front range were like, uh, don't, don't ask us for help because we're doing pretty good and we don't want our rates to go up. But we had to find a way to move it forward with, um, with real momentum. So just had to point that out. And, and the other issue is there's, there is no competition. I mean, That's right. there, there is no competition in, in, the, in the health insurance market. Yeah, I mean, the legitimate complaint from the insurers is, well, what are you doing for cost containment? And then the hospitals are like, well, what are you doing for competition? And this is a circle uh, that goes around and around. And you try to do one bill that addresses all of those, and the next thing you know, they're all mad and, and they're you know urging a no vote. But um, we have worked towards cost containment in our area uh, through the Valley Health Alliance. And that seems to be uh, slowly producing some results, and we're going to continue along those lines. Um, didn't you say that Valley View is now starting to participate? Valley View has just uh, joined on as a member of the Valley Health Alliance. And, and, here. and Mount, having Mountain Family Clinics, does it, that helps bring it down helps. cost of care as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're, we're no working doubt. on that cost they, containment They do a side. good job of, uh, I, I call it holistic uh, health care, mm -hmm. where they're really – you know, they're looking at the whole picture. They, if somebody's going, that's in their um, in their service, is going to the emergency room. They're actually calling them up and asking them why they're going to the emergency room instead of not coming into their their family Clint. practitioner. And and so um, so I, I wish we had more of that. So yeah. so, so would you? I'm just going to for clarification. We're talking healthcare insurance. Same time we're talking cost of health care because cost I think care, that right. is definitely yeah, that's I mean, cost yeah, containment that is a huge problem having worked in the industry for many years um, seeing where it's gone you know the, the old joke about the price of a band-aid so it's not really a joke it's the truth and if you could bring your own band-aids in how much better off would you be but they still charge you for band-aids um, so I, I think that that's a huge one I mean they do you, you say I don't want those stockings on my feet they're part of the package now and you get them yeah. anyway and you come yeah. home with 45 pairs of stockings um, you know I, I just think there's another thing that John you're gonna laugh at this where does the, this common sense come into this whole ball game? And it's, it's, it's there is no common sense, Patty. No. The, the state did put together a cost containment com commission, and they held hearings across the state, and it was a balanced commission of insurers and providers and so on. I went to Grand Junction to testify in front of it. They turned in their report. I don't think a single measure has been adopted. Oh. You know, so. Uh. You know, it so just seems too made. big for anyone to tackle, and uh, you know, hopefully, we'll see some real leadership coming down uh, from the governor's house at some point because mm -hmm. uh, you know something it, needs to be done. That's something for sure. needs to be done. It's pretty frightening. Um, I'm going to bring up a different one that's not on our list, and I know something Rachel asked us about to present or just to talk about with CCI was the county authority to have business licensing. One of those age-old problems where cities are allowed, states allow, but the counties are not. Yeah, we, we've submitted that as a CCI yeah. measure yeah. this year. I don't know how that's going to go, business world and what have you. We'll see. Yeah, and, and part of that that came out on that was the, the the situation we faced here with tobacco and the city of Aspen raising the age of uh, tobacco and then putting this tax to re, you know give, put money back into their funds that yep. they were losing from the state, and then people drive you know to the, across from the airport because yep. they sell cigarettes there. So the city was coming to us kind of saying, you know, you have to help us out. And we were like, we don't have, what do you mean you don't have the authority? <laughs> yeah. And so we got kind of badgered on that one until we finally convinced the city that we really don't have the authority. So it sh that should be an interesting discussion and, you know, maybe it's time yeah. to open it up. The city was able to raise their rates through their business license program of people who are selling tobacco products. Um, but, you know, perhaps even more importantly is to bear in mind the uh, air nib beds in residential areas. And, you know, when you can't even ask somebody for a business license, 
you can't collect your local taxes that they should be contributing to paying for the sheriff's office who's going to come out to the lost remote air nib passenger <laughs> trying to find the address of the house they're looking at in the rural road and you know again we all sit in different district meetings at CCI but uh, to hear some of Grand County's experiences uh, of what they uh, are, are going through where uh, septic is becoming a big one where you know houses may have been um, you know set up it's a three bedroom we're gonna have six or eight people there great it's an acceptable septic tank and then they're finding it on the listing for up to 17 people a night you know and they're like wait a second how are they? the systems weren't approved for that and uh, again people calling them when they're lost that they've gotten lost on county roads they don't know where they're supposed to go back to they you know or where to be and just uh, you know a lot of more sheriff calls on uh, pets running it free they were calling it uh, Grand County the five P's you know pets poop pot parking and pot uh, partying you know and that the, these are the things they're having to really put a lot of money and time into and that they have a massive number of their housing units are now being rented that way and so uh, an ability to do business licenses in the county I think is, is key to maintaining peace in our residential neighborhoods and, and equity other way to do that is land use and then you got to get your land use in, in order so that they'll it, it and then get, you have a, yeah, a civil process to go ahead and, what you and uh, you get, you're tied up in court for years in reference to civil process on land use exactly. so uh, it, yeah it's a catch-22 the state feels that they're much better uh, attuned and also um, in charge of, of business licenses and issuing sales tax licenses even though the county has to collect that and send it to the state and then they give it back but yeah. again <laughs> well just keep your eyes on that one when we comes up it is, CCI it is, it is it's going to be a challenge and I think that your state agencies are going to be the ones that will fight you on it because that takes their jobs away from them yeah well, we'll see what we can do maybe we limit it just to rentals yeah Steve go ahead licensing for rentals. Uh, I've been Steve looking over the list of the CCI legislative um, you, you're doing your homework Steve. there's a it's a huge long list but I don't know if you've had a chance to look at it. We're just barely beginning to look at it yeah. now. Uh, are there any other issues that, that you're pushing for change? Or did you, you submit? Don't, you, don't, you didn't submit any, but I, no, I'm I, sure there are ones have, you're We have one supporting. issue, and that's through our assessor, and, and that is uh, uh, with oil and gas, uh, oil and gas company funds. abatements yeah. uh, paying a, um, having to pay interest on that at 1% a month. And we ended up with a million dollars in interest in an abatement here just last year. Yeah, I think we uh, were so pursuing that last year as it was, CCI. It was a late. It was a late bill. It yeah. didn't get there. Um, did not, no, I got uh, killed by the uh, by, by the oil, by oil, oil and gas, gas lobby. Yeah. Yeah. What what amounts to is that it, uh, on your um, self reporting in reference to your production and all your uh, taxable uh, items to the assessors. Even if you make a mistake and overestimate, you're still entitled to uh, an abatement plus one percent interest per month, and they don't really do that except a year in a, in rear. So you're already you know, talking a lot of interest based upon their mistake, which the court has upheld. They can make a mistake; they're still entitled to their uh, abatement plus interest. And that's gone to this state Supreme Court in reference to that particular issue. Mm -hmm. So it is the rule of the land. So we're trying to make adjustments on that. Yeah, on, on the opposite side of that, when when they underpay or we we have our we do audits and they underpay, they also have they oil and gas interest. companies pay one percent interest as well. Mm -hmm. so uh, in reference to their um, yeah, delinquent taxes. For delinquent based delinquent upon taxes. again so, false so, reporting or, or mistakes uh, in reporting. So if I overpay my federal income tax, <laughs> <laughs> uh, do I get one percent a month back of interest? I don't think so. Good no, <laughs> they'll probably penalize you for getting a refund. Mm -hmm. I, I think it. they do. Actually. They do. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I made a mistake. Yeah. Well, that's different than the state uh, of Colorado in, okay. in reference to the uh, the, the, yeah, the ad valorem tax. Yeah, it's something that's fixed in statute from when interest rates were extremely high mm -hmm. and it made sense but mm -hmm. it should be somehow pegged to something in the market yeah. and, so and we did flip. we did step forward and pay that uh, particular um, interest as well as a, a proportion of 7.4 million dollars that the special districts mm -hmm. had to pay back without right. any interest but that was still a large hit to special mm -hmm. districts which was on top of the refund 
that was a sales tax refund based upon, again, the Department of Revenue making a mistake and having all of the special districts, municipalities pay back. I'm trying to think of how much that one was. Five and a half million dollars in sales tax or more for uh, two years to make up. Came, and, in, uh, came in different. Yeah, so, you, so you're talking. We, how much was it? 5.2 <laughs> instead of 5.4. I'm sorry. Um, but why we keep her around? <laughs> no, it, no, she did a lot of work on that particular issue, and that's why I say uh, it, it was very difficult. We were extremely generous, I thought, uh, <laughs> simply because we were able to assist those special districts, municipalities that had no money, uh, just absolutely had no money, and they had no reserve, no way of do other than doing a mill levy uh, increase temporarily for collection of whatever they call it. Anyway, the, there's a special mill levy that they can put on to pay their indebtedness, which goes away. So, Stephen, the are there any other ones you want to jump out? We have a few more minutes that we have some well, time. Well, so. um, one other <coughs> issue that we're bringing forward is authority and oversight on broadband infrastructure with reference to rights of way, and um, I'm not, oh. I haven't oh. phoned up on uh, learning all the ins and outs of that. Did this you, stem just off so of Creek? Yeah. yeah maybe. You're going to talk about the Andy Romanoff uh, 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 communications protection bill? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Go right I, ahead. Yeah. I mean, that, 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 the, you, you know the local issue, obviously. Yes, I do. Is that but the, uh, uh, just, that was um, a Yeah, the, the, the broadband gets treated as a utility for the purposes of being able to use our right-of-ways. Uh, counties can simply exercise their police power in terms of how that infrastructure is installed but cannot negotiate on the public's benefit um, or to the public's benefit uh, for use of that right of way. And um, we, we are introducing uh, the idea of changing that. Um, we, we had a situation where we were able to exercise our police power on um, fiber going up into our right of ways, but had no way to negotiate on the public benefit and is being offered at $1,000 a month. Um, which we got a little bit of kickback on. So yeah, but then you get to pay to relo uh, to locate those cables once they're in your right of way under another bill. You get to have uh, the cost one, of relocating. Do a locate uh, twice a year so that when you plow snow, you don't mess with the buried in your right of way. Mm -hmm. yep. So that'll cost you more to put the communications uh, stuff in your right of way. It's a catch twenty two there too, but that's a protection yeah. of the. Uh, uh, again, it's a great big bill. I think right. it was what 2001, John, when uh, when Andy ran that bill in reference to the. God, do you remember? It, it was a good 15 I don't years ago. Year. It was yeah, quite a while. It's been a while. Yeah, this, yeah. this one line we're talking about is put in by a single party to single yeah, the services. Single it goes. Council. It goes under that protection. No. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, the state of Indiana, I don't know if anybody had submitted anything like this, but maybe it's a good one for next time or something. But uh, the state of Indiana legislative uh, body determined that um, electric utilities would be suitable for using easements, would be suitable for broadband easements so without yeah. having to so redo to a contract with every way. single property owner who has an electrical easement. And I think something like that would really help That's advance the broadband too. in a lot of our communities. And I, I keep kind of wanting to get more information from the Montrose, Denver, uh, excuse me, Delta uh, Montrose <coughs> Electric, because they seem to have, you know, conquered that problem and are using, and their, their REA is just moving ro way ahead with rolling out their broadband. You may know more about it, John. No, but there was, there was a law in the books in reference to the counties could go ahead and to allow um, utilities, uh, which was the telephone telegraph um, um, bill, to uh, authorize and actually require all utilities to put it in the county right of way, all county rights of way. And I'm trying to think back, that was around 1910, 1911. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we may look there up might that be something stuff. in there. There may be something there in there. There may be something in there because I remember reading uh, Garfield County hereby authorizes uh, American tele uh, phone telegraph. Uh, the authority to put all uh, communications within their rights of way. Mm -hmm. And that dealt with, of course, telephone poles, but now we're doing a lot of burying. But that still may have some clout. We'll have to look that up. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the counties can already do that and regulate them. Yeah, go ahead, Rich. Yeah, I, I had uh, two small things I'd like to bring up. Um, one, um, 
we've noticed over the years that there's always that fireworks sales booth right uh, leaving Glenwood Springs by Cattle Creek, Cattle Creek. By Cattle Creek. and it, it literally is almost every year operating <laughs> while we have a fire ban in place and while we're all really worried about wildfires and I don't know if you guys could condition your sales that if you know, fire bans are declared, they have to close or can't something. But uh, yeah, we can't, can't license. license. That business. was one of the questions. That I was going to bring that I, up. That yeah, I, we've never understood of, how or why they're sitting there doing business. Is it because it they're says, allowed to? It on takes us 60 days to get that, that ordinance, ordinance in place, and we did not get on top of it in time this year. To, we could have gotten that or ordinance in place for July 15th. Yeah. Well, maybe yeah. work so, on it for June 1st next uh, year so because it, it, it's it just... It is something where our staff, and not Kevin, but I mean our legal staff did not get that in front of us in until, uh, until the, middle of, you, you the middle of May. You still have to have... in front of us, so... Um, yeah, so and part, I realize there might be some issue issues there, but we have, we've we just have, always felt it. We have personal issues, different issues amongst, uh, amongst commissioners on... Uh, Fireworks? No, in business. Okay. On, on business. So. Yeah, but but there is also uh, a requirement that you have um, technical testimony saying that there is an extreme fire danger, et cetera. Your fire districts, fire marshals, et cetera, if the sheriff comes together and say that this would not be beneficial to the general public, and therefore within an open fire ban, you also include fireworks sales as well as use. Now, okay. it was illegal to use them, but not it? illegal to purchase them. It, and we, there's a few other things that we happened Pray in our society that, that we can purchase, but we just not legal to use. So well, you know, I'm thinking of some of those things. Well, anyhow, just for your consideration this, this next year. This is one year. commissioner that had it breathe a sigh of relief on July 5th. I mean, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean yeah. Lake Chris, you know, Lake I Christine is, you know, that, but, but uh, I am just one commissioner that breathed a sigh of relief that there were no fires started by fireworks. So yeah. I well, anyhow, I just thought I'd mention it so you guys can consider no, your no, timing for we've it We've had lots year. of discussion about that, Rachel. And what, what amounts yeah. do you also have to look at the other side? That is the single fundraiser for a uh, Bible camp every year to keep the Bible camp going for about a hundred kids. Where is that Bible camp located? Is it at a fire? Maybe zone? they could start selling down in Denver, <laughs> you know, I mean, and get the it's camp in Eagle going. County? <laughs> Just not up in the fire rich areas of but ours. But anyway. Well, Eagle uh, County should have learned, I mean, yeah. Okay. Relax. But what amounts to there's a lot of moving parts on that. We will okay. look at that. Okay. Just take so. a look at it. I, that's all I wanted to yeah. say. And John, your point about it's legal to sell them, but not to use them. It's legal to buy tracer bin. bullets. That's right. Never. They weren't legal prohibited to use from using them in CPW yeah. shooting ranges, but it still we don't know where it just they takes one person to be careless or not know the rule. It, it's legal to buy cigarettes but not smoke them in the city limits or within certain. It's, it's, it's legal to buy marijuana, but it's illegal to smoke it in any public or uh, private Probably. place other than such and such. Those are many things mm -hmm. that, uh, again, people have to understand that it's legal to sell it. Just you're illegal when you use it in the wrong location. So, Do you know that the city of Laguna Beach, California um, banned cigarette smoking and sales of cigarettes within the whole town? And at first it was very controversial and it's been in effect for I think a year now and um, everybody's just totally accepting of it. Well, not everybody, yeah. I shouldn't say that, but you don't see people pushing it. Yeah, the <laughs> I thought that was a pretty bold step. Yeah, yeah the, one, the one that I always fight, it's, it's uh, legal to walk. Uh, on trails with your dog, your kids, mountain bikes, as well as uh, some ATVs, but it's illegal to ride your horse. Mm -hmm. Yet the horse is the one that created the trail. But, you know, that's, there's a good reason, because there's some people you don't want on a horse, and I'm one of them. <laughs> I'm always fighting that particular one, because I, I want horses I and cows one. going up those trails. And that's, that's who created them, and now they're banned from using it. So, I think we uh, could do keep have, uh, the provision similar to our marijuana rules that you can buy fireworks, but you have to use them in the home only. Yeah, that'd be good. I like that. Not outside in, in your yard. Inside. Your All right. I, that, I don't know if that will work, Greg. Right? <laughs> yeah, I don't think the fire department would be going for that common one. Sense may, <laughs> common sense may rise to the surface. We do, we do have one referendum issue that I'd like to talk about. It'll be a little bit controversial, I'm sure, with, with your... Um, with your board, but that is uh, referendum 97, which I think will be amendment 97, which is uh, 
no uh, oil and gas drilling within 2,500 feet of a, a home or uh, occupied um, occupied structure. And in Garfield County, where we are an oil and gas county, we received $20 million. We've had we have received up to $40 million, but we receive now $20 million a year in uh, oil and gas property taxes. Uh, Garfield County is 60 percent federal land, so that it, about a third and two thirds. But yet, with 11,000 um, oil and gas wells, we have a thousand on federal lands. We have 10,000 on uh, private land. If that uh, goes into effect in Garfield County, uh, up to 90 percent of the private lands will not be available for drilling. Uh, I anticipate within three years we will lose a lot, most of our companies that are drilling now. We will lose probably in three years $10 million uh, more in uh, property tax, and uh, we may end up, we may end up, we may have to look at Los Animas County, which did not do a good job on their reserves and now is uh, open three days a week as a county. I mean, it, it that, that uh, if that passes, and it, it, I know it's, it's a, it's a political issue. It's also a rural urban issue. But if that passes, that has the potential to drive us to our knees. As a Actually, we're going to have a we're going to have a presentation so. by Oil and Gas and give you the actual layout and map of how that would affect. Um, but it is a the deal. surrounding areas, not only Rio Blanco, Garfield, Mesa, Pitkin, and on through on what that would actually do, as well as the state, and and you're losing the billions of billions of dollars in taxes that come, and and 90 plus percent of Garfield County would not be eligible for any development. But it's not retroactive. It would mean if no. you have no, no, it would okay, be from that way forward. Point forward, forward yeah. That point forward. Gorgeous. But but it is an impact, and we need to talk about it. We need to look at it, yeah. and we need to make a, uh, uh, an educated decision on the initiative. Yeah, I remember several years back um, when uh, this issue first came up, and I know we were supportive of, I think the distance was we were trying to uh, be to compromise with what was uh, uh, brought forward and what the oil and gas company want was it a, I want to say a thousand feet or I say a thousand, but I can't a thousand feet and, and uh, oil and gas uh, wouldn't go with that and, and so nothing came of it but we were supportive yeah. of something that was reasonable but it's a compromise to, to address that, the, the safety of the, the, uh, the uh, residents and homeowners and businesses but the reality of uh, trying to find uh, well sites, the yeah. well sites. The and there was an exception in that as well which is already in place and the exception is anything less than 500 feet must have a permission of the landowner and also approved by the oil and gas commission department of health and all the other folks so there is already an exe exemption in place on that but it's a thousand feet from any church school or or right. uh, a community community uh, building right. building uh, okay. but this would be 2500 feet from all yeah yeah you, you know i think uh, Speaking as a citizen as much as a commissioner, we're going to hear a lot on the radio and the news about that um, from the advocates uh, pretty clearly. I, I just want to stress how concerned I am about the industry uh, kind of uh, countervening ballot measures they've put on to be a constitutional amendment, um, and that is uh, the, to uh, change the nature of taking laws so that yeah. any government regulation that may devalue your property becomes a taking. And it's not limited to oil and gas regulations, it's anything. So it could be uh, fire mitigation for a home in the backcountry. You've made us chop down those 10 trees, now we need to pay them for making their own site safe. Um, and it, it, it's something that we've heard from Sam Mamet coming out and talking to people that this is just wide and open and you know right now a takings case is only valid if you've really diminished the value of someone's property to such a point that they have no nothing left you are almost nothing left of, of usable value uh, this is saying any any action of government so even if you have a, a house size restriction uh, or, or height restriction, it, you know, somebody could come in and say, that's a takings of my value. I want it to go 35 feet high. I would have had better views, and you guys stopped me. So 
um, that's the one, and they actually have two on the ballot, but uh, that's the one, I think it's, it's 108. It's Farm, Farm Bureau actually. And Farm that. Bureau was a, a uh, sponsor of it as well. It, was, it comes out, I think, uh, Jerry, Senator Sonnenberg um, was a proponent for that. But, but, you, but you're correct, from a government perspective, that is, that's an awful, awful, awful uh, proposition. Yeah. And, uh, and so we all have to understand where that people one. don't want to lose their their property rights, and yet that that does not Mr. that Google is not the answer. Point. That is not the answer. So will exactly. you please keep us up to speed when you get the map and the presentation? I think that's something we should yeah. we should definitely look at and see what we can do. Well, these two guys are keeping track of me. What are you talking about? <laughs> keeping track of you? Yeah. No, and nobody can do one that, John. Question, Patty, if I could ask the commissioners, yeah. um, are there things that the the gas industry could do in their drilling practices that would make it make it safer and have less um, gas emissions out of the drill drilling sites because I think I think that explosion at the house over in Firestone. in the front range was maybe part of the totally impetus different, behind totally this. Different different. Those were flow, pipes. Flow, those, were those are flow lines. Flow lines that, that, that again were crafted and properly made out of PVC and also a sub uh, developer uh, a subdivider developer digging without a locate mm -hmm. I think it's a lot of issues that took place there and it's a lot of people's faults that that took place and, uh -huh. and it's a shame that two people were killed but it wasn't the drillers it happened to be the companies the midstream the people as well as the, the land mid developers the that did uh -huh. that yeah. yeah. But I think there are things that industry can do. It's just a matter of how tight do we make those regulations where it interferes with their ability to do business. Yeah. And so there's that's another area where everything but he's been trying to seek some form of compromise. Well, if you go this far but we don't want you to go this far, can we work in that that mid ground? Uh, we do have a, a methane rule in Colorado, although that was methane, uh, yeah. you know, it was looked at on a national level. We have that in Colorado and we do have the the most stringent oil and gas yeah, rules and regulations, yeah. maybe not only in the United States, but possibly in, in the world. I mean, I don't know, some European countries may, may be more. Uh, so, I, and we, we're showing, at least in our from our environmental health, that our air quality is improving, right. uh, has improved yearly, really, since the, the peak in 2008. And uh, a lot of what's happened in, in the oil and gas industry is that in 2008 they were drilling every 10 acres because they were just going straight down and now with uh, directional drilling we can see them uh, uh, drilling from one pad and, and accessing up to a section 640 acres so there have been te technological changes that have made it easier so one rig today can do what uh, five rigs did in 2008. So, I, I, but you know, I, I you know, our, the COGCC has done some some good work as far as um, trying to manage that rule, rule uh, making. I know I, you know, I've attended your your energy yeah the uh, symposium advisory board yeah and several, several years. Yes. I wasn't able to make it this last time, but I've learned a lot a lot going to that. We all need to continue to learn. To yeah. That's what this all job right. is about, obviously. <laughs> We're always learning. We yeah, learn today. you got so many things that I we know. all take in. So are there any other points? Um, I want to thank you again. Yeah. It's really nice for you to come up and see our new space and That's our new great. building. Yes, sir. Kevin. I don't know if this affects Pitkin County. Oh, my right. microphone's on. Uh, we joined the Pilt class action lawsuit. Oh, I just saw that come through. And I don't know if you guys have had a chance to consider that yet or not. Yeah, our attorney's office is looking at that, and I think they're going to be advising you. But yeah, we're we coming up on the time frame for that. There's really no <coughs> downside to that. When a class action suit's already been asserted and uh, what have you, if you don't join, you don't get an extra payment for the last three years of a failure to pay. Um, you do lose about... Was it? I'm trying to think. It's a hundred thousand dollars for Garfield County that we. Yeah, I know, but the, the attorneys on the class action shoot, there's a percentage, ten percent, percent or something yeah. like that, well, would would come off that. that, and it's just based upon what was allocated and what Congress actually paid or Department of Interior actually paid. Right, right. And that's all that is. And we, uh, we were estimating it's about fifty thousand a year. It's a three year look back, and then mm -hmm. you have the uh, ten or fifteen, whatever it was, yeah. percent off the top. You know what? You can always use so. fifty thousand a year. 
Yeah. But no, I forwarded to John Ely to look at as soon yeah, as it came okay. out. And, and it's really nice is because built payment can go up for anything, and it's right. not, not encumbered by federal uh, regulations on where you this can spend it. So it could be a, 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 a nice windfall for something. Yeah. You always have something. Very good. Anything well, else? I have one thing. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I, Rachel, I believe... I always uh -oh, John I, believe, I believe you're termed, termed and I, I want to thank you uh, just as a commissioner from an outside county for your service, for the amount of time you've spent at CCI, Club 20, and for your honesty and for just, just <laughs> giving, your, giving your opinion and, and participating <laughs> and collaborating. And, and so from Garfield County, I want to want to thank you for your service. So thank you very much. Yeah, I appreciate you're here. We totally support you. <laughs> Not sure we're letting her go far. We just haven't figured out where we're going to yeah, put her. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's, that's well, nice. Thank you. It's, so. been, it's been a pleasure working with yeah. you. Hey, that was nice, Tom. So thank things. you. Yeah. All right, gentlemen. So you're yeah. heading over the pass. Yeah, Be careful. You. Yeah. yeah. Kevin's going to take our. Uh, Wonderful gift home with him. Yeah, I'm going to give this to Kevin because I'm four blocks away. He's where got I'm the park. company. <laughs> I'm going to take the bus back to Buttermilk. Okay. I'll oh, put, you do. I'll okay. put it in my truck. Don't worry. Where you're I'll, close. Uh, yeah, I'm right across. Don't lose it. All right. We've been we saving no, it for a long time. That's great. That, 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 I really appreciate that. John Peacock's when it goes, do you guys realize <laughs> this has Garfield County on it? <laughs> for like. That was a great, <laughs> great gift. Maybe we should you. give Karen it back. So thank you. It was really nice to see you. Once we figured out, we couldn't take it through adverse possession. <laughs> Thanks again. You guys drive safe. Have so, grassroots, we're going to take yeah. 10 minutes, please. Welcome back. This is the Board of County Commissioners regular meeting. No, it's not. It's a work session meeting on Tuesday, August the 14th. We are at a point in our agenda, which is a prep for a joint meeting with Lake County. That meeting will be on August the 28th. Thanks, Patty. Um, so every year we try and do at least one joint meeting with our neighboring counties. We just did, uh, I, I had a successful one, I think, with uh, Garfield County. Our next one is with Lake County, and as is our um, um, process, we set aside time for the board to think about items that we may want to prepare for um, conversation or um, just for that joint meeting. So really, a time was set aside today to, to bring some of those items forward. And so I believe uh, that we will want to check with them and maybe have some statistics about the the um, 35, greater than 35 foot uh, trucks going over Independence Pass to see what the issues were this year. Uh, it's my understanding that people are still doing it. I saw one, my last one back in Denver, and uh, it was being followed closely by Aspen, uh, excuse me, a Pitton County Sheriff's <laughs> car. Okay. So, yes, I saw an 18 wheeler um, last trip over the pass myself. And uh, he was followed a few cars back by a Pickens County Sheriff's officer, and I asked him what's their process, and he said, "Well, we uh, really escort them through to make sure they make it through safely. Once it's already past the point of no return and nowhere to turn back, and, and we they ticket. ticket them once they're safely down." So I was glad to see that. Happening. I saw them one day just leaving. They just got in a call. They were just heading up for lunch. So, so we know it's still occurring. So we need to hopefully we'll have those numbers for our discussion. Also. The status of the work being done here at the gate, what's happening there, see if Lake County has any plans on their side um, to do anything as far as kind of waiting to see what we're doing over here and how it works and, and how we might be able to facilitate them doing something on their side. And the other is um, if they're doing anything to encourage CDOT to do some work on road repairs on their side of Independence Pass. That's definitely needed. Um, Rachel also I think is very interested in do they have any new information about any water issues they may be seeing over there? Yeah, I don't think there'll really be anything so much, but that's always of interest, and um, they, they may be interested with our settlement on Aurora or what, what difference that makes. I, I don't know. 
Um, I'm thinking the other thing, the airport, uh, airport issues are always important to them because they have a very small rural airport and they've occasionally come over here for expertise, but you might want to just update them that we're, we've got the um, status EA on the airport project or what we've done. Mm -hmm. And the other is, is any other new economic development? Rachel said she's noticed that there's some of the storefronts. Kind of where they're out. going, maybe just find out from them how, yeah, how, how things are going over there. And you know what else might be interesting, John, just thinking about it, is their hospital, even though it's in Leadville, um, if there's been any changes in the status of keeping that facility open. Steve, did you have anything? Yeah, I was thinking the uh, issue of short-term rentals, which is so huge for Grand County, I think it really affects any county, especially in re resort areas or close to resort areas. So. I thought just yeah. to talk about that issue and see if they have any are having problems or, or would want to participate in possible solutions. Okay. Any, anybody else have any suggestions for the joint meeting? Are we all planning to go or is it, George, are you guys planning I'm to go? I'm not going to go. I'm planning okay. to go. Uh, you know, the one other thing we may want to mention is just uh, talk to them about potentially joining CCAC. I think they've had some members who are interested and active and uh you know attended a few of our little sessions um, testing the water and you might want to talk to them about that so that meeting is on the tuesday the 28th tuesday the 28th and then we come back here for oh um on that same date i won't be able to be there because i, I will be because i have an acro meeting but i can get over here by 11 to catch the whatever we're driving over and okay. then um after that, and we have a and interesting uh, afternoon that day. Yes, yeah, sir. and you know, during uh, future agendas, is also going to mention. I'll just go ahead and do it now. Is that Rafta is having a celebration of the Maroon Bells bus service? I, I think I want to say it's forty years. Um, I don't know, George. Do you I know never. It? I haven't heard about this. We just heard about it oh. and so i, I think they're going to be looking for ago? uh yesterday so i think um we're going they're going to be looking for a commissioner which would either be chair or rafta i think representative to probably speak to it so yeah that may require us to split up responsibilities a little bit that day is too. it that day it's the 28th, it's the 28th yeah okay. well if george isn't Going and I don't over. know, for George, if you're available for that or not. If you're not going over to Lake yeah, County. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm not going to Lake County, so I'll but check. I, that's the first I've heard about it. I'll check with Dan and see what the story yeah. is. Well, let's just see, but, yeah, that's fine with me, but if I could go, I would go, but somebody's got to be here. Yeah, we we just found out about it, too, so. Yeah. Okay. Um, so then after, so now we can go to our future chats. <laughs> yeah, since I started on that, give me just a sec here. Yeah, so the um, celebration, it is 40 years of Maroon Bell's bus service. They're doing that on Tuesday, August 28th from noon to 2. Where, where did you get that from? All I know is that we got it from somebody at RAFTA contacted Charlotte. So uh, I can... Surprise, George. Yeah, I can ask, ask Charlotte about it. I, I don't know who contacted so, her. So uh, just forward that on to me, please. Okay. Yeah, Maybe so we'll that'll work that. out, George, then, if you can be there, because I'll be over yeah. there. Okay. Okay. Um, and then I think all of you got uh, invitations to for the uh, homeless shelter benefit on Thursday. If any of you are planning to go, if you could just let Charlotte know. Um, I don't... Thursday of this week? Yeah. Well, Thursday of this week, so everybody knows, Northwest COG meeting is being held here upstairs in the Maroon Creek room, Maroon Bell's room. So um, So it's Thursday, August 16th from 6 to 9 p.m. 6 to 9 where? Ajax Tavern. Um, tickets are $95 a piece, or tables are yeah. I never, quite a bit I didn't more. ever see that invite. This is for the homeless shelter? Yeah. I didn't see it. I, I received them as a citizen individual. I didn't receive them I, as yeah, a Yeah, and I'll look at my personal right. email. I did not get one through <coughs> county email. Um, and I've made a commitment for that evening, so I cannot attend. Yeah, I don't I know if be you're. Going. Are you kind of looking for someone to attend on behalf not, of the board, John? No, not necessarily. No, we just weren't sure if there. You know, sometimes when there's even if you're there incidentally, you'd like to have it posted 
Okay. We weren't sure if, if there'd be three of us there. Yeah, one, none, or all of you might be going, so we just wanted to There's check. A chance I'll be there. I bought a ticket, but I said I don't know okay. if I can come, but I'm going to support it. Okay. okay. Very nice. Yeah, and I'm not able to go. I have another thing. Okay. okay. That answers that. But, yep. if, but if anybody wants to come by the Northwest Cog meeting at lunch, we'll be having lunch. So if anybody. I'm, I'm planning on being at most of the meeting, but I have, I'm not, I have a phone did call. Did you RSVP? I did. Okay, perfect. Yep. So and we just I have need a to know for phone food. call. I have to leave early yeah, in the afternoon. You can do that. We just have to notice for food. Yeah. No. Um, oh, that's right. Ooh. And Thursday is uh, Club 20 is going to be reviewing ballot measures from 9 to 2 by video webinar with uh, pro and con presenters. That's a long time to it's, video webinar. It's a lot of ballot issues. That's narrowed down to, I think, either six or seven that are going to make the ballot. You going to pay attention to that? I'm going to do Give that. Us so that's synopsis. why I'm not going to your board meeting. <laughs> <laughs> um, Rachel, you're more than welcome to do a bazillion hour webinar and just give us some input. That right. would be great. That's what I thought. <laughs> Thank you. All right. John, anything else that you have? Not, not for me on future agendas. Um, uh, the one thing I would add on future agendas uh, towards the end of our packet here, I had previously said I'm not going to make the meeting of, um, where is it, the 26th, Wednesday the 26th. Um, uh, there's a different presentation through Sonoran Institute about uh, water and water leadership, uh, but the nature of that presentation has really changed in enough ways that I think my time would be more valuable spent here, and uh, Kathy and Karn from QQ are going to go forward. That's the 26th of September. Yeah, so I will be here the 26th of September, and that kind of changes for community development if they've told anybody they'd only have a four-person board. So just let you know that. Thank you. Um, and planning ahead, um, Election Day, are we going to schedule meetings since it is a general election? I'd leave that up to I you I know guys. we're going to be busy that day. and with between I, I think we normally take election day off, so we should. I would like to do that because yeah. I might be a little busy that day. Yeah. <coughs> we always take election off if people are working on issues, and I will be working on issues. I will be, too. Hmm. So there you go, John. All right. So that's plan again. Anybody else have any future agendas? No. That was easy, John. So now we're going to move to, <coughs> what are we moving to? Are we moving to this young man sitting in front of us? Well, a board open <coughs> discussion. We had. Jeanette to come down at, uh, turn us on at 3.30. Oh, okay. This well, is a continuance. Oh, and I don't think I brought it down with me. So I'm going to borrow yours, Steve. Yeah. Take continuance of our um, special meeting from this morning. Um, we noticed it for 3.40, well, we said about 3.45, so we're still good at 3.30, John? Yeah, actually, I'd said approximately 3.15 yeah. when we started yeah. Future oh, Agenda, perfect. so. So this is an emergency, res so this is part of our special meeting. Perfect timing. Yeah. Are you, ta everything. Are you taping this? <laughs> yeah, so let's let him get a minute to get set up. The reason I'm plugging in this uh, tape recorder, Patty, is because Earlier this morning when the board met, the um, special meeting was initiated. On this tape. tape. So I this will make that <coughs> entire complete record. Clean record. Augmented by the grassroots. And recording. Jeanette is watching us now so sure. that she can do minutes as part of the special meeting that we called to order this morning at 10 o'clock. So as soon as John figures out technology over there. Hmm. Do you want to take a five-minute break, Patty? Or? No. Because <laughs> he's working on it quickly. Um, so we will do this. Uh, do we have any other open discussion, John Peacock? That Not from okay. me, uh, All right. other than what GR yeah. All right. Are we good? Yep. All right. So this is a special meeting continued from this morning. Um, this is for an emergency resolution of the Board of County Commissioners authorizing the execution of a joint venture agreement with Roaring Fork RE1 School District and Habitat for Humanity and the appropriation of funding for the Basalt Vista Affordable Housing Project. And the reason this is an emergency is we would like to move forward with this project and we will be doing a confirmation of this ordinance on 30 oh, days. Oh, it would be noticed, so it probably would be a month from 
So in a month, we'll have it scheduled on a regular meeting for a, regular meeting day. a public hearing and confirmation of the emergency ordinance. Emergency resolution. resolution. Correct. Okay. So a brief discussion. Do you want to kick it off or do you want me? No, you do it. As I said, a brief <coughs> discussion. So we schedule about an hour for this, okay, Patty, perfect. but uh, <laughs> no. Um, just briefly, a board has been talking about this project uh, for some time now, and what is in front of you is an emergency resolution to adopt what's called a joint venture agreement, uh, which will represent our contractual agreement for participation in the Basalt Vista housing project. Um, we are doing this as an emergency resolution to allow us to distribute funds to keep the project moving ahead uh, on schedule. What the joint venture agreement um, proposes um, is the county's contribution. Just by a little bit of background, the total number of units uh, is 27 uh, that will be developed. Uh, there will be four two-bedroom units, 17 three-bedroom units, and six four-bedroom units for a total of 83 bedrooms. Um, Picking County's portion uh, under the joint venture agreement is a very specific number, $3,008,679, which represents 48% of the um, uh, uh, basically gap that, that needed to be covered uh, for Habitat. The county will have deed restricted to its benefit a total of 13 units two two-bedroom, eight three-bedroom, and three four-bedroom units, uh, which represents that same um, percentage. For its part, the school district will have 14 units deed restricted to its benefit, uh, including two two-bedroom, uh, nine three-bedroom, and three four-bedroom units, and the land contribution has been valued at just over $3.2 million. Um, the project has evolved as we've been talking about it. It is now a net zero, um, anticipated to be net zero from an energy perspective. It will uh, be an all electric um, set of, of units that will be uh, covered by solar power that will be on the units. Um, the design has also been enhanced to ensure enclosed uh, garage and storage areas and uh, we're, we're pretty excited about this project. So we're hoping that the board will uh, see fit to adopt the joint venture agreement so we can keep this project moving forward. Okay, anything from legal counsel? Um, we anticipate the documents that are going to be hopefully authorized by the board today uh, to be in a form that's executable rather soon. Um, as the board knows, the ground uh, was broken on this some time ago, and work has been proceeding uh, pretty rapidly. And uh, as John said, this will allow that work to continue without interruption. Okay. Very good. Devaney, yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say this. Uh, I'm sure we'll mention this again as this pro project uh, continues. But it is such an unusual and unique project. The partnership itself between uh, the Roaring Fork School District, Pickett County, and the Habitat for Humanity, that's, that's a, a first. It's a model that I think Habitat of Humanity is really looking to uh, pursue in other communities, and, and as well as us in terms of public-private partnerships. And the other thing that makes this really unique is, as John no noted, uh, this is a net zero energy uh, project. It's, I believe it's a first, uh, the first complex, certainly uh, employee housing, and probably any complex that's net zero, uh, not only in the county, but I'm sure throughout the valley. And um, I would just want to credit core staff. Uh, they came to the table, um, realized there was an opportunity to, uh, to make this a net zero, and uh, core uh, contributed $100,000 uh, to make this help, help to make this happen. Fantastic. Yeah, it's a great opportunity um, for those in the Mid Valley. It's a, it's a beautiful parcel, um, and we're excited about it. And it is. It's been it's been difficult because of the three totally different entities between the nonprofit, the school the school district, and the government local government. But um, it's exciting, and um, 
it was interesting to watch the progress when you're sitting in the, the gym during the fire to see them actually working on this process and seeing the utilities go in, the infrastructure. So we're excited. We're just, we're excited for the day we get to cut that ribbon and have people in the valley have housing. It'll be great. Yes, please. I, I was just going to say that um, since it's in, for education, it's at a school, it's an education project, net zero being innovative and new enough, I would really hope that we can use this project for, for education and net zero to introduce the concept. So I'm hoping it's really well documented. And at the end of the day, uh, when we're showing this off, we have ways to get people in there to see it and, and measure it and understand how it works. Um, this, this is a, a demonstration project as well, and I, I'd really like to make sure that, uh, that we can take full advantage of that. And, and Greg, to that point, Holy Cross is viewing this as exactly as you say, as a demonstration project and uh, being able to, to measure um, these types of, of programs, hopefully as a model for others in the future. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Rachel and Steve. Yeah, um, thank you, Patty. I'd just like to say that uh, when you look at uh, emissions and trying to reduce <coughs> energy use, the built environment already built is always the biggest challenge. And we have, through CORE, been doing some programs to particularly work with the affordable housing units that are available. But I do think it's kind of landmark to move forward that new construction, both reflected in this building that we're in now and then the first housing project we're doing, are shooting towards higher energy goals. Uh, the housing net zero, this is not quite a net zero building, but given all the activity and intensity of use in one spot, we're, we're coming close. And that's why we've done things such as the um, solar farm uh, in other areas. So uh, this is, is a proud day, and uh, it's a little more expensive on the front end, and it sh should be uh, very valuable in terms of keeping housing costs reasonable. That's what affordable housing is about. It's all the all the components, whether you're, it's your homeowner dues or your utilities or whether the place is big enough to actually store things and not have to pay for a storage unit. So well done, John. Appreciate it. Steve? Yeah, I think it's worth noting for the public's benefit that we are paying more money than our original agreement, mm -hmm. but we are getting one more unit than the original agreement too. So it's um, it's pretty close to a wash for us. We're actually um, benef benefiting from an increase in cost. Also, I'm intrigued by the possibility we have, our units have to be used by someone who works in Pickin County and potentially we could have school teachers from the basalt school system living in one of our units because many of them, or uh, probably most of them, work on the Picking County side of the line, even though the, the, line, the county line does run right through the elementary school. Uh, so that, that's uh, an intriguing possibility that we would, the school district could actually end up with <laughs> more teachers housed than they have numbers on the paper. The, the teachers would certainly qualify for the lottery just as any other right. uh, person employed in, in Picking County and, and would have to compete in that lottery. Um, and so that, you're right, Steve, that is a possibility. Okay, seeing no questions, I will bring it back to the board. I make the motion to approve. Thank you. Second. Second. I have a motion. I have three two seconds. seconds. I have three almost, four. <laughs> um, I'm going to call the question. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Now it's my understanding I need a motion to adjourn. Is this correct, gentlemen? The motion special adjourn meeting. The special meeting. So moved. Second. I have a motion. I have a second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 I'm, uh, meeting is adjourned as far as the special meeting. We will now continue with our work session <coughs> meeting, which I believe we have a public works yard project. This is interesting. I was just out there. I have a feeling I know what you're going to talk about. Thank you, Patty. I'm GR Fielding. I'm the county engineer. And uh, I am just going to pull up a couple of slides here in a moment to, uh, there we go, uh, to show you. This is the public works facility. And uh, up in front of you right now is a graphic. It's called a line diagram, but it's the best kind of snapshot of the entire yard that I had. Uh, to orientate the board, 
I don't have a pointer. That no, we don't have that. This. Um, this is uh, this is where uh, Public Works administrative staff sits. This is Animal Shelter Road, and that's uh, parallel with State Highway 82. This big building right here, that's the fleet building. So in essence, the project includes everything on the lower lot. And that goes from the public works cabin here. Uh oh. There you go. Don't move it. There you uh, go. All the way down to where typically we have sheriff's vehicles parked. Mm -hmm. uh, the work includes drainage improvements, uh, gets us more operational space because as equipment has gotten larger, it gets harder to drive around the fleet building with a tandem axle dump truck with a wing on the side and a 12 foot <laughs> plow in front of it. And then you have a pickup truck with a plow parked perpendicular. Yeah. So we've, we've es essentially run out of room on, on part of that. Uh, one of the biggest parts of the work I is the new fueling station. Uh, that is work is going on right now as we talk. Uh, currently, everyone fuels right here. Uh, we have a very small tank. Uh, it's about 6,000 gallons for all of our fuel. Uh, we have frequently run out of fuel during large winter storms. And so uh, part of the project is helping alleviate that. Uh, and so the new fueling station is going in right here. So that is down near the south end of the fleet building. And so it'll change a little bit of the flow of, of public works in the yard and how our operations work there. So to put in big tanks, you need to dig big holes. This is not even down to grade yet. That's a full-size skid steer for reference. Uh, and obviously the fleet building there. And those are the big tanks. Uh, one of them that is being set in this picture is bifurcated. So it gives us opportunity in the future to hold different types and, and kind of helps future-proof the project a little bit and gives us uh, some extra storage. The one closest is the, going to be the main diesel tank. In the background, you can see two smaller tanks. Uh, one will hold our DEF, which is uh, additive now to the big diesel vehicles uh, for emissions. And then the other one is our used oil tank. We, we uh, capture all of our used oil, and it gets, uh, it gets picked up from the fleet shop. Where are they going? Uh, one goes behind these two tanks, so kind of the that upper right it. corner, there's a up a little bit of a higher pad that they had constructed, and so that one got uh, put there this morning. And the other one, it goes at the corner, opposite corner of the fleet building, so on the northwest corner, kind of closest to where the wash bay is. Is that where the old oil went? Go? The old oil was, was sort of in that area, but because of uh, change in state regulations, we had to move where the new one goes because we couldn't use all of the old plumbing. So, but that one will be separate <coughs> from this one that has the depth yes. in it. It will. Okay. And so, <clears throat> as we speak, they are Ready? working on filling our large holes, and we will have everything <coughs> um, start being uh, backfilled here pretty soon. Uh, we, this we really got started in earnest last week, and it's amazing how fast things can happen, uh, especially after we had a couple minor delays, kind of getting everything kicked off, as a lot of the big projects like this do. Uh, they've kind of doubled down, and, and uh, we've had a lot of equipment. We've had up to four or five crews working in this <coughs> small space at one time. Didn't find any dinosaur bones during no the excavation? No dinosaur bones, but we found some rocks about the size of a dinosaur <laughs> uh, in the hole. Uh, anyone who's dug in the valley floor through this location or in, through this area of the valley knows that there are enormous boulders, uh, think 10 feet round granite. Uh, and so last two days we've had a <clears throat> air hammer mounted to one of the bigger excavators you can get up and down Highway 82, breaking the rocks down small enough so we can actually get them on a large truck to get them out of the yard. So I have to ask, can you go back to that? It, from this viewpoint, it looks like there's going to have to be something added to bring it up to ground level. Yes, and so where those ports are, yeah, ports. Uh, there are actually uh, not installed yet. There are basically like Fitting, a manhole. Yes, and those come up about uh, just under four feet. I was hoping either that or you're going to have to drill down to get your gas. Yes. Okay. Those are really pretty tanks. Uh, the... 
Other site improvements in include new curb and gutter. Uh, as I said, our equipment's getting larger. We moved, we're moving that lower lot a bit, and this kind of showed both the drainage and about how much we're, space we're getting, and that was enough to fit the equipment around some of the tight spots around fleet. Uh, the, uh, one of the, and you can see the wall in the mm -hmm. background of this that we're gonna start installing uh, truly tomorrow. Uh, we were doing some block layout earlier. Legos. So those are styrofoam, just like the kids. No, they're play cement. No. no, but they. <laughs> so they is, look like it. <laughs> they're plastic. They're Legos. This, this is a block, and we used this up on Red Mountain, and I was very impressed on once you get it, it goes so fast, and they it just looks lock great. In place. And it's it's essentially large Lego blocks, and you can see the uh, on the top of each one how they get keyed into each other, and it's essentially a gravity wall. They're big hunks of concrete that are uh, heavy enough that um, that's Stabilize that's your retaining themselves. structure. They just use that in Carbondale on the back road off. Yeah, on, that Star Road. on Snowmass Road. Drive. Yes, and that's the same same product. They look great when they're done. The uh, the gentleman who's up on the scissor lift, he is doing part of our lighting piece. Uh, we've had a lot of concerns over the years uh, as far as having the right lighting in the right places at the right time at Public Works. And so through this project, we are adding timers and motion sensors and updating all of the lights to LED uh, to kind of go into the theme that the board just talked about with the net zero housing. We're trying to always uh, get our energy use out there lower. And so that's a lot um, that's going on. Uh, the other thing that I didn't get a good picture of in here yet because it looks like just a big hole with a great concrete wall in it is our new storm drainage pond uh, that's being constructed right now. And in essence, this entire lot drains to one point. Uh, we've always had a pond there. Uh, uh, we are increasing the size and we're making it uh, a little bit more biodiverse. Uh, we're going to be planting it. We have uh, a storm structure in it that'll help slow down the water so it doesn't all uh, get released at one time. But uh, we've never had an instance where we've ever had an overflow uh, there. So Where we're, is that located? Uh, it's right in between what we call the old sand shed. Um, to see that building and that other building, and then there's our... There's, our there's the cabin. Here. So it's in between the cabin and the... Uh, what you. I think we're referring to as the other building. Do you have a building. name for the wet, the wet wetland? Uh, sort of like the John Denver. No, I don't think. I, ho hopefully, it's not flowing water quite like the uh, John Denver is. It's going to be the Public Works pond. Yeah, this this is the pond back here. Here's the Public Works cabin, uh -huh. and then this is the pond right and here. And what is the water that will be going into the pond? It's the storm drainage. Storm so drainage. It, when we have uh, large rain events. Okay. Um, I, I've wondered, I don't know if it's too late or possible, but to really consider one of the uh, oil separators for the car wash area. I know we had investigated before a while ago, and uh, a recycled water system is far too expensive and, and not worth the investment. But it seems that maybe an oil separator or something like that, at the very least, to trap the debris coming off the cars from car wash. And it's my understanding that there's a sand trap there now that's in good condition. There's and a sand trap. So yes, and, and so that the acts filter as, system. Yeah, as the filtration system. And then that water goes not to the storm drainage pond, but no. more directly. How does that get released? I believe that uh, is either tied into the sanitary sewer or um, I know about where the line is. I can find that out, Rachel. Okay. But I, I know that we'd gone through during the design process. Uh, going through what we were replacing, what we were keeping. I don't remember exactly how we made the decision. I do remember deciding to keep what we had currently. Okay. I just want to see that we can try to treat the water as best as we are able to. Absolutely. Thank you. Is there any other questions from the when board? When is it scheduled for completion? Um, that's been a little bit of a moving target, and because of a couple of our delays, we are hoping to get a updated schedule in the next week. Our weekly meetings are on Monday. We had a couple moving parts on Monday, so we kind of scrapped what we talked about as a schedule. Uh, this fall is the kind of the general answer. Uh, I think that since the, that entire lower lot gets repaved, uh, that we're, we're going to be looking to be done with paving sometime early in October. Thank you. Yeah, George. Uh, George, do we lock in uh, 
bulk prices for oil or diesel fuel? That's a great question, George. And that is a big impetus to the sizing of the tanks. It gives us much larger flexibility moving into the future with how we do that. I know that we're going to likely embark on a new procurement process for uh, for our petroleum products, and that's going to that's gonna really be, um, because before with the small tanks, we just needed to get fuel when they were here. They just basically always got topped off, always got topped off, and still we ran out of fuel. And so with the larger tanks, we'll be able to uh, be more maneuverable with that procurement. Well, hopefully we'll, we'll see some savings too. If we've just been uh, purchasing fuel as needed to be topped off, we haven't been able to go after like a, a year-long uh, lease uh, bid. Well, we we have had a long-term contract with our supplier, but because of the size of our infrastructure, we were never able to utilize uh, economies of scale, uh, which we'll be able to do now. And uh, we, because of the small infrastructure, as, as you noted, yes, we were just constantly being topped off, and, and that was a, a fluctuating rate based on the contract that we have. All right, thanks. Steve, go ahead. Uh, GR, the, I presume that the existing tanks are going to go up to the landfill still? And that what's the projected uh, construction and moving of them going to take place? That's a very good question, Steve, and I'm going to have to actually ask Jonah that when I, <laughs> when I get back because I know that we're organizing uh, essentially as soon as we're able to uh, put the new infrastructure alive, the old infrastructure gets hauled out, bring, brought up to the landfill, and that kind of starts that whole process. I think uh, we haven't necessarily set a hard date for that because we haven't known when we're going to be able to go live with the new tanks and hopefully through our next scheduling exercise we'll be able to answer those questions. I am going to be back to the board I believe in two weeks to do another update on this and so I'll try to get some answers and a little bit better answer for George and Steve and uh, Rachel for a couple of those things. And then GR for other folks who are watching is the fuel farm is public works operational while all this dirt is being moved? <laughs> yes. Uh, in fact, last night I, I visited with several deputies as they came in and got their fuel uh, before the, the night patrol or a couple guys were uh, just finishing up their day patrol and, and heading home. And we've had uh, still the same uh, level of activity. We've been able to offset all of our equipment uh, uh, to adjacent areas, and so we just have a little bit w longer walk in the morning to get to equipment. But everything, by and large, uh, is still operational. We have access to one half of the fleet building at any given time, and then once they're done with the half, then we'll swap sides of the fleet building, and they'll start constructing on that other side. Steve. I remember when uh, the RE1 bus barn in Glenwood, they had a diesel leak underground, and they had to excavate a hole that looked kind of like the hole we dug there. Um, what precautions or measures have we taken to, in case of a leak underground, to contain that and not have to dig a, you know, dig to China to contain it. Newly designed tanks. Yes, uh, Patty's correct. The new tanks are double walled and they are up to all of the new state standards that they have for underground storage tanks. The other piece to this from my understanding is the monitoring systems that we'll have now. And so the monitoring system is tied into a software that should be able to detect things like leaks. Uh, the be honest though, if you ever do have a leak in an underground storage tank, the unfortunate truth is that you usually have to excavate down to fix it. Um, but the way that this is set up is one, it's again, it's the uh, double walled tank, and two, we'll have the monitoring system, so we should be able to know that without uh, having anything catastrophic happen. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. All right, good job. Thank you. Thank you. I was out there looking at it. It looks great. I didn't. I didn't know for some reason. When did the tanks come in? The new bright red tanks. I didn't notice them. I can't. I can't believe I missed them. Uh, you. Yeah. You wouldn't have. They came in first thing yesterday morning. Oh, that's why. Because I was out there over the weekend. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Much. We are moving along. Now we have another interesting item before us. We are going to talk water questions. 
And we, um, these, uh, some questions were presented to us. This is for our community survey, I believe. Yeah, so this is bringing back, there, there were some concerns, I think, raised by the board or around the questions as drafted. Um, Pat, I, I guess maybe I'll let you talk about what's happened and since John. then. And John. And John. Who we drafted these yeah, questions? We, we as a joint effort, probably mostly John, right, John? I thought it was mostly Pat. <laughs> Well, I mean, if we start back at the beginning, when we first reviewed the older survey, we felt that some of the water questions were um, not really as meaningful as they could be, or that, you know, now we've taken a certain number of measures, um, it, it just, was there something more we should find out from the public rather than use the old questions again, which wouldn't be particularly valuable to us. So that's where it started. So in that regard, we are knocking around two potential questions uh, that the board saw the last time this matter was discussed. And I think you have one question today, which looks like this, which deals with- the back with of our packets. Well, there are two. There's two. two. Well, two, that one's a, like a corollary to the first type of a thing. Yeah. And it builds off of a one topic that um, um, was discussed for for trying to uh, ad address uh, some sort of a probative question toward it. Um, it, uh, it it touches on the topic of uh, a sort of a um, uh, well a tension between um, agricultural use of water and other consumptive uses of water. Uh, for example. Um, uh, used by residential uh, consumers, uh, municipal suppliers, um, uh, or other uh, types of uses. Um, at any rate, the, um, the question sets up the uh, fact pattern that the county pursues agricultural um, preservation as well as um, increasing agricultural productivity, uh, as well as the county does uh, pursue uh, programs and goals of incre maintaining and increasing natural stream flow within all of our rivers and, and streams. Uh, to the extent that those two um, propositions are somewhat potentially uh, adverse to one another, uh, the thought was to ask a question to see how the community at large might weight those. Um, and perhaps that that type of a response would inform future direction and energy of the county staff, at least, to bring things before the BOCC for consideration. So. Yeah, George. Yeah, I, I can see the, the dilemma here. Uh, you're pitting one policy goal against another policy goal. What, what this lacks, though, is um, the problem is for me is, and, and I realize you're, we're limited by length number number of uh, words but it doesn't uh, address or inform the public what we are doing in terms of putting more water in the local creeks and streams now and so without that context um, I don't know how we would get a, a real true um, reading on this um, you know given that given that our open space and trails program has uh, been aggressively in the last several years gone out and actually start to utilize our open space for ag to bring in local food production which does require water but at the same time we're doing we've got the RISIT in basalt we've got a new uh, IGA with Aurora we're, we're providing uh, opportunities for um, uh, ditch work uh, all to allow more water to go into the streams and rivers so uh, so for me, it's, it's, it's difficult to see how this is going to really be uh, valuable in, in terms of getting a true uh, feedback from the public because they haven't got the entire context. Yeah, and I'm just gonna, in reading them, the answers are going to be yes. People, after looking at the river this year, people are going to say, do whatever you can to keep water in the river. The problem for me is, as George was saying, but on my own personal level, outside of the fact we are pitching the two goals, water and agriculture, um, I'm really supportive of the leases in sustainable ag, historic sustainable ag in this valley. 
plus um, if we were to turn some of our open space into, you know, dry them up, um, with, this says no vegetation. I, I, yeah, that's not worded. Yeah, no vegetation. Well. But <laughs> then, what are we? What what's out there? We have issues with wildfire right now. Are we going to be having these big fields of brush? Um, so I, I think there's a lot of issues. But I really think the people, after looking at the rivers this year, will say, yeah, do whatever you can to put water in the river. Um, yes to number one. What? Yes to the first question. Well, and oh yeah, yes to the first one. But um, yeah, right. Sorry. And um, so it's, it's a tough one. It's well, because it's, I believe it's not, in both, but. I, I don't think it's designed to drive to a particular answer. It's just something that might inform all of us as to what popular opinion may be on the topic. And if there is something that's surprising, then uh, it's something to, you know, to apply some work and effort toward and then bring back to the public right. and, and to inform the public of whatever we can turn up and then um, see where it goes from there. You don't, so it would be asking just one of these or wouldn't be asking the second one because they kind of fly in each other's no, face? You, well, they, they are the flip of one another. Yeah. But I would think that both questions would go in. If you don't present the option, then it, it begs People an affirmative People can answer both questions, which, so you can say yes and yes. So put more water in the river and do more ag. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, where are we getting with that? Or no and no, okay. So, so I, I think, I, well, I, you know, I kind of think I know what the answers it, are going to be to the first it was a It was the best stab at the time to try to get at the issue, that's all. I mean, if you think, in like in George Point, uh, not having a, broader enough context uh, to uh, illustrate past activities of the county, for example, as George mentioned, you know. It, right, and, and I think that's worthy of a discussion that's outside of this survey. That's worthy of a, just a discussion with the general public because it's a longer issue. There's just so much involved in it to find out where the community wants It's to a go. huge issue, and it's difficult to yeah. get it into a short survey question. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Rachel? Well, I mean, just hearing the board, it raises a number of potential thoughts. Uh, one would be to consider doing more of a water pole separately, uh, standalone, when a number of things could be explained to people. I realize that's costly, but it, it, it is an option. The second was going to say we do these about every three years, Pat. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to walk away from the opportunity now to get something because we wouldn't hear again for another three years if there's not a separate water pole and education effort going forward. Um, what I found was that th the, the question was too vague for me, and that when it says to leave water, in the county you know, also promotes preservation of agricultural land through the open space and trails program for local food production. Because we just don't, you know, I, the county, you know, is that promoting it on private property? Is it promoting it? Where yeah, what? You could go on, but it's yeah, not it, just it, it, it's not just, just food. We're also promoting pasture, and we're supporting yeah. hay. Well, pasture and hay is 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 local food production and cattle food. But yeah, I mean, I just felt it was it was too vague to say that we promote preservation on lands we own, you know, or, or how do we say that? Um, well, you know, we also promote it on lands that we don't own through mm -hmm. conservation easements and through a re the land use code requirement of preserving ninety percent of, historic, of pasture. Irrig historic irrigated pasture or or, uh, or lands in the context of uh, real estate or right. residential Right, but I'm problem. going to the second part of the question where it says, would you be willing to see some county-owned lands irrigated less? And so, I mean, I think we're just mixing an awful lot of, of concepts in one thing, maybe to not, you know, if we're asking should we stop trying to uh, change our land use code, that's a different question that needs more detail in it uh, to reduce irrigation needs. But, um, you know, and I did think the barren of education, <laughs> the vegetation kind of I mean, Dry stuck. pasture would be a better yeah, phrase. Yeah, or, or, or uh, uh, you know, uh, you know. There's uh, sand out there. Uh, yeah, dry land farming or, or um, barren flat. of irrigation-dependent vegetation and return to native vegetation, you know, something like that. Um, and on the second question, I was just wondering whether it really is additional diversions of water or is it continued? Is it what we're doing right now to allow them to irrigate? And, and so the additional kind of, I, I, I just was questioning whether we really are asking about additional water and additional lands or are we talking about continued use of what we have? Um, overall, it seems too complicated to try to condense down to small questions, I guess. And, that unless there was something because, you know, 
irrigating below uh, the frying pan coming into the roaring fork is very different than uh, above the frying pan where it's all dependent on just the roaring fork flows without root eye augmentation water coming in. Um, so th those are my ideas. We either need to really clean it up and, and narrow it down and make it, uh, it focus on a much smaller topic that we can discreetly describe for people to understand or uh, maybe leave it out. The survey gets shorter, which everybody likes a shorter survey anyhow, and then um, consider doing some follow-up polling and, and information sharing to find out what the answer is on this. Because uh, similar to George, I just don't think there's enough information out there with people understanding what we've done to put the questions in context. I have a great suggestion. Um, we've been talking about trying to bring Open Space and Trails and Healthy Rivers and Streams Board together on an item and issue because they kind of been working over here and working over there. We've also been talking about coming up with some kind of water policy discussion with water, our water rights on open okay. space lands. So I think having a meeting, a public meeting with those boards, with this, these questions here, you know, how do we balance this and bring it out to, with both boards with input about this, 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 these ag leases, what f future opportunities we could have in conservation easements and with water conservation efforts and irrigation and you know our water quantity and quality but water quantity issues and have a have a have a meeting have a session have a invite the public invite you know the the people on both sides and the other entities um, to come sit in a room and let's get the conversation going I think that might that might vet out some questions that might be appropriate if we were to go in the direction of a poll community-wide or it might just give us the answers and give us some direction at that time that's Sounds what good. I would like to see yeah. I think th good. that's a good Rachel you brought it up and I'm running with it because yeah. I think that's a great idea to because this is the conversation we need to have and this is an opportunity thank you John for us to be thinking about it well and we've had a limited amount of turnover with those two boards as gotcha. well right. yeah is, is there a schedule that we're on to try and get this thing out. Yes. We're trying to approve June. this so you can get it going. <laughs> like June. Yeah, June, yeah. <laughs> the thing it seems to me we've got yeah. we've got a simple question. It's it's a complicated issue, but there's a simple question. I think I applaud you for trying to simplify it. One is we have a dilemma and that we're trying to balance two competing interests that we all yeah, identify. Yeah, it needs to be framed that way. Can we all we're really asking anybody in these questions is are, are, is the community willing to let us pursue this dynamic balance and manage the dynamic balance between water conservation in the rivers and water for ag lands? Well, we already and have in, that. And we already know that's to do that well, balance. But that's we all really need what, community permission that's what the question to balance is asking it. Us. That's what the question is asking. So then we can we can still have a. I would love to see healthy rivers and open space get together and have a summit with us on this. I, I would applaud that and I support that. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm thinking that these questions aren't that don't have to be that complicated for what you're trying to get at here. I don't see the, a complicated answer in the yes and the no, unless people are going to fill in but, a big other. Well, they could, but what the question, the, the point for me is not the question, is that us seeing these questions has allowed us now the opportunity to think outside of asking him because. We already know the answers. We know that people are concerned about both. So let's have the meeting with both those entities and figure out where we want to go to balance. So you don't need to ask the question at all? Is that I what don't think I don't think we need to. I think we need to just move forward with it. I, I think there's other ways to get to the information without it being part of this survey. It makes this survey have shorter. The community in the room. And you know, the thing I'm feeling about it, Greg, is that it de would depend on the experience of the person filling in this question because someone like Steve might say, well, ag is good because then there's return flows in the late season. So, but, but it doesn't say anything about the value of return flows from agricultural property. Right. But so one person might answer it that way because they know about return flows and another might not. And so I think that without further kind of, and, and you know, it's a good opportunity at the end of the day to look back and say, this is where we've come with the Healthy Community Fund at this point and let the public know what has been done. It no, might be time, excuse me, sorry. <laughs> got too many healthy ones going on um, but the, but the just healthy, healthy, healthy rivers uh in streams fund and let people know what has been done with the money uh what what's in front of us to look at for water efficiencies what's in front of us even in terms of the drought conditions this whole area may face more into so this the future doesn't sound like a survey as much right as well, what i'm uh, saying is there could be education and outreach and then you know further surveys to see what public opinion is about some of those issues <laughs> we uh, should just i guess if we get back to is there, any, is there a question where we want to ask no. 
Well, you say that. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think the question has been has provided us the opportunity to say we've been talking about doing something about water um, because and agriculture um, um, ag irrigated lands agricultured lands we've been talking about what we're going to do with water rights we have on our own lands and how we're going to look at them or with conservation easements this is an opportunity to bring both those boards together come up with um, talk to them about what they'd like to see as an agenda for the meeting open it up to the public and see where it goes all right Steve? I would favor that approach, turn it over to our boards and let them do the An agenda. thinking about it. Um, comments about the two different questions. I also don't like the barren of vegetation <laughs> wording, <clears throat> but I would suggest all of you take a drive up Capitol Creek and you will be shocked when you see what the lack of water. Has lack done. of water. And there's no water in the creek either. Mm -hmm. The creek is virtually dry. The fields are Yellow. as close to barren of vegetation with still having some plants that will, the grass will turn green if After we get enough rain. rain or something. But that could be the future if we don't have water and we have a hotter, drier climate. And you can see it on Capitol Creek this year. So I urge you all to go take a look at that. On the second question, I would do maybe a and we could pose this to the healthy rivers and streams maybe, but make it a multiple choice thing with some different options, uh, additional diversions of water out of local creeks, more efficient irrigation would be an option, change of crop cover on the land would be an option, so you're not necessarily having a grass hay field, but it might be something that uses less water that um, so those would be possible scenarios of what the county could be promoting going down okay. the road. So I think the question is, do we want to put these questions on the survey that's coming up? Because that survey needs to be done and get ready to roll. And or do we want to um, go ahead and try and convene a joint meeting with both boards, have them come up with some ideas for agenda, have it come back to us so we can we can actually be the final say what the agenda will be because it technically is our meeting with convening the two boards. So first question, do we want to put these on the survey? I would say no. Yeah, I, I'd say no. I kind of thought that this went forward while I was gone in July, so it was a bit of a It did. We brought it back, Rachel, just so you could be here. Okay, Just we're so I could say no it's question. Just an incomplete discussion. Yeah. There it is. We wanted you here, Rachel, because you're our water person. We are not putting it on the agenda, I mean on the survey. And we, the board is supportive of trying to convene a meeting. We'll have to be talking with both boards and staff to see what that would look like. Great. Getting back to our community survey, do we want to ask a question? Of, is, are people happy with the way water is being managed? You, uh, after looking question. at the creeks. With, without uh, information, it's just a, a shot in the dark, though. I oh. mean, th if you look back to the other questions that are asked, they're somewhat detailed about a specific program or way. And So without more detail, you don't Without know. more detail, and uh, this isn't even an average water year. If you I mean, it's so below river, average, how, could, would say how no. can you measure yeah. well? So, uh, and, and look towards planning a meeting, so. Well, we, the, uh, the idea of having those two boards in the same room meet and talk about this particular issue and then bring it back to the BOCC was talked about last year and we didn't pursue it because the way the uh, other business sort of um, proceeded out. so we can just uh, key that up and Perfect. this type of question format won't be used at all because in that type of a setting we can get into something that's a lot more informed and a lot more in-depth and a lot more meaningful. So I thank you for bringing these questions forward and pushing us to do something we said we were going to do and now we're going to do it. Yeah, thanks, Tom. Okay. Everybody good with that? Mm -hmm. Great. And okay. In my mind, I was challenged to see if I could get through this whole conversation without saying. <laughs> and I did, except, except for, for now. Good, <laughs> Pat. Thank you, Pat. So, Pat, does, Pat Bigham, do you, would, you, you, would you like to say something? No, 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 no. Okay, great. And, and there was no visible no steam coming out your ears. So, um, Pat, please finalize that survey and we'll get it rolling. Thank you. All right, okay. board, we are calling it. We will see each other next Tuesday for a regular meeting, and that's when we're going to... Is that when we're going to Lake County? No, it's the following week. 
That that's uh, you're going upstairs to the Maroon Bells room. Um, we're doing a mini our retreat. board retreat next Tuesday. I knew we were doing something special. Something All right, special. grassroots. Thank you. It's a wrap for today. Thank you. Thank you.